Please remain standing as Reverend Howard Brammer offers today's invocation. Almighty God, before the green, Almighty God, before the green flag drops and before the national anthem is sung, we pause to acknowledge you, the creator and sustainer of life. We have assembled here, Lord, at this incredible racing capital of the world to observe 43 world-class drivers engaged in an awesome display of endurance, speed, and self-control. We pray for the safety and well-being of every driver, team member, and fan. In this time of turbulence and uncertainty in our nation, we ask you to guide us by your light, protect us by your might, and unify us in your sight. God bless America in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Big Machine Records' Peyton Smith for the singing of the National Anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Drivers will climb into their cars. This is it, the last race of the regular season. Who will be the champion and who will kiss the bricks at Days In?
was a beautiful day The sun beat down I had the radio on I was driving Trees flew by Me and Del were singing Little runaway I was flying Yeah, running down a dream That never would come to me Working on a mystery Monster Energy Cup Series Racing from Indianapolis. Telecast presented by Golden Corral. For our free race stories, let's go track side, starting with Parker Kligerman. Well, Rick, William Byron, this 24 car and this 24 team, know they're in a must-win position if they want to make the playoffs. But they've got two good things going for them. One, Williams won your next finish series. Two, this team is essentially the entire team that Casey Kane won the Brickyard 400 with last year, Kelly. Well, Jimmy Johnson is a four-time winner here at the Brickyard. If number five comes today, it couldn't come at a better time. For the first time in postseason history, Jimmy Johnson is not locked into the playoffs now in the last race of the regular season. Last year, he had a shot to win before wrecking late. The 48 car has not been to victory lane for 48 races, Marty. They're trying to change that today. A lot of pressure on the drivers today. Final race of the regular season. A lot of pressure on the crew chiefs as well. Just talked to that guy, Rodney Childers, moments ago. Competition cautions at lap 10 and lap 30. He said it's going to be a mess. You're going to see people pit at lap 8, lap 8, lap 9, lap 10, not come at lap 30. It's going to be all over the board here in this first stage, which means it's going to make it very interesting to call for you, Rick Allen. <laughs> well, always when you come to Indianapolis Motor Speedway and the Brickyard 400, you expect the unexpected. A lot of history on the bricks of this racetrack. And to get everyone rolling, we must first fire the engines. Let's go trackside for the command. And now for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome the president, founder, and CEO of Big Machine Records and Big Machine Vodka, Scott Porchetta. Drivers, are you ready for the 25th running of the Big Machine Vodka 400 at the Brickyard? Let's do this! Drivers, start your engines! Well, rain may have pushed back the start of this race 24 hours, but nothing can push down when you come to Indianapolis Motor Speedway and the history of this place. Well, it's simple, Rick. As a young boy growing up in this country watching auto racing, my heroes were created at this racetrack, whether it was Unser or Foyt and Open Wheel and transition to Gordon and Earnhardt at the Brickyard. This racetrack creates racing legends. Unprecedented weekend. There has not been any track time by any of the drivers for this race. That has never happened before in the modern era of NASCAR. So when these cup drivers go out there, who should be worried? Well, it's the unknown for everyone. We've never seen this, as you just said. And that is a concern for not just the crew chief, but the driver as well. How hard do they push? And it couldn't come in a worse race. This is the last race of the regular season. So think about two drivers that are currently in the playoffs, but just barely. It's William, excuse me, Jimmy Johnson and Alex Bowman just on the inside. While they look good on points, a surprise winner would absolutely devastate their playoff hopes. Would that be, say, Jamie McMurray, he has won the Brickyard before. Or Ryan Newman, another Brickyard 400 winner. But I think perhaps the sentimental favorite, the driver of the 24. I think Jeff Gordon took the 24 to victory lane five times in this race, a record that currently stands today. Could William Byron become the youngest ever Brickyard 400 winner and get a race win in his rookie season? And remember, this is the last race of the regular season, so those playoff points 
are up for grabs as well. We're going to call this race a little differently than we normally do when we come to Indianapolis. We're going to call it radio style. So out in turn two will be XM Sirius Radio and MRN Radio, Mike Bagley. In turn three will be, well, on the crow's nest. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is actually driving the pace car, so he'll be up there in just a little bit. And the mayor, Jeff Burton, has turn four. He will be handing it back off to Steve and I here in the Pagoda in this very historic racetrack. And let's go to turn two and Mike Bagley. What are we going to see out there, Mike? Well, you're going to see a lot of interesting racing, I think, Rick. This is a very finicky racetrack, and it's a very fast racetrack. And all of the excitement comes on restarts. Last year, Martin Truex Jr. to the inside just has a slight bobble in turn number one, slides up, makes contact with Kyle Busch. Everybody had to scatter to avoid, and it was amazing to watch everybody scatter there through and make their way through off turn number two and on the back straight away. When you get off two, you want a good run. You want to get that run down to the inside, and you're going to be able to complete that pass before you reach turn three. That's where Dale Earnhardt Jr. will be positioned for us once he leaves the pace car, and then once through three, another short shoot and into the view of Jeff Burton. Bagley, everybody wants to win a Brickyard 400. And on top of that, you have all the pressure of the playoffs starting next week. Winning means a great deal. Finishing well means a great deal. We saw the intensity last year pick up. You mentioned restarts. You're exactly right. Three wide getting into turn three. Just plain and simple is not going to work. See Jimmy Johnson on the bottom of the racetrack trying to push the issue, make something happen. The car gets away from him. Contact, big contact in the wall. His day over. Turn four. Kurt Busch into the inside wall, shoots him back out in front of his teammate, Clint Boyer. We ride along with the helmet clam, nowhere to go. Incredible impact. So these corners, three wide doesn't work. It's hard to make two wide work. You're going to see some incredible action today. And we are looking forward to it. The 25th running of the Brickyard 400 is coming up next. The green flag will fly when we return. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Golden Corral, your choice rules. Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. And by Toyota, let's go places. Indianapolis Motor Speedway, so much history made here at the Brickyard. Three-time cup champion Tony Stewart tells us what it means to him. There's just something magical. There's always been an energy 
you can feel people that have been there in the past. You sense that there's something else going on other than what's physically happening. To drive across that yard of bricks is something that you can't explain to people. Tony Story, a native Hoosier, his dream comes true. Yes, you're the man! That memory of coming down the front stretch and seeing those checkered flags waving, I'd finally got to realize a dream since I was a child. I wish I could put it in words. Today's been my entire life. You take somebody that's won the biggest lotteries in the world, and that's what it feels like. Kyle Busch, back to back, wins at the Brickyard. You feel like you're king for a day. A fourth win in the Brickyard 400 to Jimmy Johnson. And you feel like you're the most powerful person in the world when you've won the Brickyard. The only five-time winner of the Brickyard 400. The whole team, everybody jumps up and climbs the fence. Everybody gets to line up and kiss the bricks. That shows you how significant and how much it means to win at the Brickyard. There's a lot of races to win, and there's a lot of races that when you retire, you love having that trophy on there, but there's no better feeling than winning at the Brickyard. He said you celebrate for the day, but that stays with you for a lifetime, a Brickyard 400 winner. Let's take a look at the starting grid brought to you by Golden Corral. It will roll across the top of the screen. And NBC's own Dale Earnhardt Jr., our buddy, is the pace car driver today, leading the field to the start of the race in the 2018 Chevy Camaro ZL1. And he told us he wasn't going to use the cruise control. Hopefully that's true. Hey, Dale Jr., it's Latard up in the booth, man. You got a copy? Yeah, I got a copy, buddy. You hear me? Oh, I got you. I got you good. So you've done so many cool things in racing. Just tell us what this experience is like leading the field to the start of the 25th Brickyard. Well, some good-looking race cars back there, and uh, it's a great feeling. There's so much energy, uh, it's, you know, as, as you get closer and closer to the drop of the green flag. And I've had so many opportunities to see this sport from so many different perspectives. So I'm taking advantage of every one, every opportunity, and this is just a new one. So I want to thank Indy and Chevrolet and... Uh, Kyle Bush for giving me a bumper on the back straightaway he gave <laughs> so I didn't miss out on any part of this. I know they like to do that to the pace car drivers, so it's been a good one so far. Well, we appreciate you taking that perspective, but now hustle over your turn three, get up <laughs> up in the crow's nest here. I think we got a little replay of, uh, of your buddy. Just kind of, hey, welcoming you back to the racetrack is what I think this is right here. <laughs> a little bump and run. It's all funny until he spins out the pace car. <laughs> so much fun. Yeah, Dale Jr. Dale Jr. knows he's going to have some fun today. He'll be calling the action in turn three today. And again, two by two, the field set by owner's points. They have not been on the track at all. No practice, no qualifying. Let's find out how the driver of the two, Brad Keselowski, is doing. Let's dial him up. Hey, Brad, it's Steve Letard up in the NBCSN booth. You got a copy, pal? Yes, sir. What's going on? Well, man, you got to tell me the, the big story, historic day, no practice, no laps, no anything. How does that change your approach as you're coming close to the green here at Indy? I can't really say it does change it. You know, it's still a race. It's still a, a great trophy and, a, you know, a marquee race to be able to win. So, uh, you know, these teams are so smart. they got all these simulation tools. You've got to have faith and go out there and uh, drive it like you stole from lap one. Well, this racetrack is so historic, this race a crown jewel, but it has to be even more special coming here with Roger Penske being your owner. He's synonymous with this racetrack. What's it mean to drive for Roger Penske here at Indy? Well, I think the, the easiest answer to that, Steve, is just an uh, opportunity to add on to an incredible legacy. You know, Team Penske has been around for over 50 years and uh, won here at Indy uh, more times than I can count on my fingers and toes. So with that in mind, it'd be nice to have a a NASCAR Brickyard win in, in the Cup Series. We've got one in the Spinning Series, but not in the Cup Series. So we got a chance to, to put that mark on the board today. And, uh, you know, based off of last week, I'd say it's a good chance to do so. Well, man, I just want to thank you on behalf of us at NBC and everyone, all the fans listening, taking a little bit of time to talk to the fans before starting one of the biggest races of the year. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a good one up there. And thanks for everybody uh, tuning in on a Monday. I won't tell your boss if you don't tell mine. <laughs> oh, your boss is watching, by the way, Brad, <laughs> very closely. We're going to ride along with a few different drivers on today's race. One of those being Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He has the John Deere on board, and one of the cameras will be the side banner, which will be on the right side or passenger side of that car. 
Well, you have Chase Elliott with the Chevrolet onboard camera, and this is going to have a great shot at the work that Chase Elliott is putting in. Looking back at the driver, we're going to see just what it's like to take laps around the Indy. We also have Denny Hamlin with the FedEx on board and the helmet cam. FedEx delivers more than just packages. FedEx delivers possibilities. Look at that helmet cam. Oh, That's a great shot. I thought he was going to give a little bump to Boyer right there. <laughs> just seems to be the, letting him know. They're ready to go. Right here we have Kyle Larson in the 42. He has that credit one bank onboard camera. And he has this camera. Wherever the action is, this camera can find it. 360 degrees all the way around the car. Jimmy Johns has a camera on Kevin Harvick's car. We'll be able to ride along with him. Also a 360 camera. We can see anything going on anywhere around Kevin Harvick on the racetrack. So the Brickyard 400, such a famous race back here in 1994, the first time the Cup Series came. Break down this race for us, 400 miles. 400 miles at a very oddly shaped racetrack. It's very historic, but it is flat. They call it oval. It's really like a rectangle, 160 laps. Those 160 laps we've broken down into the stages, the first and second stage, both 50 laps in length. That leaves 60 laps for the final stage. The fuel window is around 40, a little before, maybe a little bit after lap 40. Dave. So guys, uh, keep this in mind. Martin Truex Jr. was supposed to start third, but because he failed technical inspection three times, he will start at the rear. More importantly, he just radioed to his crew the brake pedal. It feels squishy. Add that to his list of challenges as he tries to win his first Brickyard 400, Kelly. Hey, no practice, no problem for Chase Elliott, who said he's fired up and loves the idea of no practice or qualifying. Crew Chief Alan Gustafson said it could be an advantage for this team before saying, quote, it'll be fun. We'll see how much fun he has starting 11th, Parker. Well, that's the case for Regan Smith as well, who hasn't been in a cup car for 17 months. He's filling in for Casey Cannon. Guys, this team did something really odd. They came down pit road here under the pace laps to allow him to stop in the box because he hasn't done that in so long, Marty. The field set by owner points, so why would the top two in the championship standings choose the first two pit stalls on pit road? Because they're much quicker. Rodney Childers told me that even the second stall here on pit road is half a second faster than other stalls further down. And to work that out, you see Rodney Childers and Adam Stevens kind of working strategy for later in the day. Some of the narrowest pit boxes on the cup circuit here in Indianapolis, but also the longest. They're going to work together to make sure there's no problems on pit road today, Rick. And it looks like Dale Jr. is actually going to pull the car off of the racetrack he will pull the pace car off competition caution at lap 10 and lap 30 and then of course the end of the stage at lap 50. two by two they come down the front stretch in front of the grandstands we're underway with the brickyard 400. Here come the leaders diving into turn number one. Kyle Busch is away with a lead. Kevin Harvick will grab second. The first battle up for grabs is for third. Logano for a moment looked low on Kurt Busch. Go back away. That's Logano in the 22. Running in the fourth spot right now. Everybody clears turn two cleanly, and everybody is in hot pursuit of Kyle Busch, who's gotten away to about a four car length lead. Very interesting race. No practice whatsoever. They have no idea how the cars are going to drive. So I think you'll see a little bit of patience right now. 10 laps until the competition caution. That's an early competition caution, but excessive tire wear here. You see Brad Keselowski going after his teammate on turn four. Teammates door to door as they come out of turn number four. Brad Keselowski in the two, blocking as he goes to the inside, trying to hold off the 14 of Clint Boyer, then the 22 of Joey Logano on the outside. Doesn't normally work side by side when they enter turn one wide open, so. Joey Logano gets the advantage over his teammate. He's running in the fourth position right now, but Keselowski's not giving up. Here's Brad digging hard down low in the two, trying to open up the inside line, and he's got him lined up at the back door. Keselowski down low, Logano up high. Keselowski will grab the spot. He'll go to fourth. Logano, that yellow and red car will fall to fifth, and he's still under fire. Yeah, he was working really hard to keep that position because they're lined up behind him. Right now, Larson's got a big run. Look at Clint Boyer. He was underneath Larson, picked up two spots in the short two. Here's the car of Blaney making his way to the front as well. Larson made a little bit of contact there with the 22, and that allowed the car to get by him on the inside. But now we see Chase Elliott in the nine making the move as well. Everyone taking advantage of this opportunity on this early restart. 
Chase Elliott running in the 10th position right now. He is in that white and blue number nine car. And behind him, here's Denny Hamlin in that FedEx Toyota. Jimmy Johnson is there as well, along with Eric Jones. And here comes Alex Bowman. He'll peek to the inside. He'll try to get a run as they race down the backstretch. You see he's riding along with Denny Hamlin there out of that rear bumper cam. Side by side right here, Alex Bowman, Eric Jones. Bowman's got the spot. That's where you want to be. Eric Jones way up out of the groove. He's just going to have to back off, get himself in position, and get back to the bottom of the racetrack. He's in the groove completely. Eric Jones has a major handling issues right now. William Byron's trying to take advantage of those issues as he looks to the inside. Byron in the 24, trying to take away that spot from Eric Jones as we see Kyle Larson in the 42 in front of the 22 of Joey Logano. Larson will go to the number six position. There's Logano in the 22, he's seventh. His teammate, Ryan Blaney, right behind him, trying to close down and take that spot away. Marty? And you see Joey Logano started third, has fallen back to seventh. He said he's extremely tight in the middle of the corners, and then it snaps loose coming off the corners. Jeff, I'm assuming at Indianapolis, that's not a fun feeling. No, it's not a fun feeling at all. And obviously, you want your car to handle well right off the front of the race, but with this caution coming on only 10 laps, Marty, they will have a time to adjust the car and try to make it better. Competition caution coming at lap 10. Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick running one and two here in Indy. Catch all the action of NASCAR on NBC with the NBC Sports app. You can get closer with alternate camera angles, driver stats, and track information. You get it anytime, anywhere. Marty. Seven laps in, Rick, and this uh, competition caution coming up at lap 10. It's going to get crazy here on pit road. Rodney Childers saying some cars are going to come down at lap eight. Adam Stevens agrees, maybe lap nine for some cars. But the problem is, if you don't pit on that competition caution, you can't take fuel. You can only take fuel at lap 10 and lap 30 and not in between those. So that kind of puts you in a little bit of a, of a box, Steve. But those tires and that track position, way more important. Well, yeah, it's all about track position. So pit road doesn't close like it would before a stage. So there's really nothing other than the yellow coming up. So I expect 
a bunch of cars. And basically, it's all how close you are to the leader. The front five or six could pit without losing a lap, but as more cars pit, that opens the window for other cars. So it's a little bit of a moving target as we see the field completing lap nine here. Yeah, they're on lap nine, so they would have to, if they want to come before the competition caution, they'd have to come right now. We'll see if Kyle Busch or Kevin Harvick take that opportunity. Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, Kurt Busch, Brad Keselowski, Clint Boyer, they are the top five. And it looks as though they're going to stay out and complete this lap. So they will go all the way to the competition caution, which will be lap 10. We'll see if any tankers come off of turn number four and dive onto pit road. It's going to be tough at this situation with the leaders deciding to stay out. I don't think anyone any farther behind them in the pack can come. So it looks like everyone's got to kind of play nice and run the first 10 laps as it's intended. The whole idea of a competition yellow is to let these crew chiefs look at the tires to see what the wear situation is. This track is very hard on tires. Xfinity race just getting over. A lot of cup crew chiefs were on pit road looking at the tire wear of the tires that came off the Xfinity cars. And that Xfinity race is going to help the track. You see there's a light uh, spot on the track, a little bit darker groove where the cars are running. All that rubber that's put down, that was from the Xfinity race. Yes, because there was no, oh. and we see now the 18 and the 9, or excuse me, the 4, thinking about coming to pit road. The 4 does, so just before the competition caution is going to come out, the 4 of Kevin Harvick has dove onto pit road. Marty. And I think they were calling the 18 to pit road as well, so maybe a little miscommunication. We will follow up on that. We see Kevin Harvick coming down pit road. No real complaints about the car. A lot of these guys have been really complaining. And again, their first truck laps on the track right now. So Kevin Harvick and Rodney Childers coming down pit road here. They're going to put on four fresh Goodyear tires and make a slight air pressure adjustment, but no major changes. And when everybody else pits at the competition caution, they will stay out. We're waiting for that caution. It just comes out now. Yeah, from my position, I was watching the 18 and the four, and they both slowed down off a of turn four like they were going to pit. I think that Kyle Busch, he's, on, he's coming to pit road, slowing down. He just missed it. He tried to carry too much speed to get to pit road and wasn't able to make it. So it, you can see. He wasn't faking Kevin Harvick. If he'd have been faking him out, he wouldn't have slowed down that much. So that was a uh, just a mistake by, by Kyle Busch. I'm surprised more teams didn't try it. We'll see it. It's obviously going to work out for Kevin Harvick. I think I saw the 14 of Clint Boyer also on pit road. So he'll gain some track position. The only drawback to that was they can't the penalty, add fuel. Sir. We'll come back to fuel in it. Oh, and you oh, heard penalty. I heard penalty. Well, we just showed the replay. And the tires were smoking as he came on to pit road. I hadn't heard anything, so I assumed he got down to pit road speed. We'll see what the penalty was, whether it was speeding or a tire violation. We'll have to get the word from NASCAR, but. It was an uncontrolled tire that was the penalty for the, the four team. Marty. And guys, yes, they did call Kyle Busch to pit road a little bit too late. He knew he was going to hit that commitment box, so he just said, I'm not going to make it. Not worth it. Stayed out there. Adam Stevens says, my bad. I should have given you more notice. Well, a good decision by Kyle not to, you know, risk hitting that box. So uncontrolled tire on the four. So basically all the tires have to be in control, which is about an arm length away from a crew member. You see right here the crew member coming around. Sure, right there. That shows me exactly what I'm looking for. I have the to wheel was way out in front of him. Yeah. It was. They say it's within arm's length. So one wheel goes ahead and nobody's with it, and then the the crew member does catch up to it. That's a tough call. I'm not sure that would have got called. There were 40 cars on pit road, but when there's only two, it's a lot easier to see that. And now the field will all come back to pit road because the four will have to come back on pit road now under this competition caution led by the 18. Dave. Third place, Brad Keselowski will bring the two car down pit road trying to win Roger Penske his first Brickyard 400. That car is a little bit loose off of every corner, so they'll make some adjustments for that. As for the 41 of Kurt Busch running in second place now, that adjustment has already been made for his race car. The left rear tire going on the 41 car will have reduced air pressure as the crews go to work and hit pit road, Marty. Kyle Busch has led all 11 laps to this point, Dave, and there was some debate on the radio about maybe even staying out here at the comp caution. Adam 
Adam Stevens said, just bring it here, why not? So no real changes except the car a little bit too free on exit when Kyle gets back to the gas. Two Goodyear tires for the 18, the Kyle Busch, who will, there you see, easily win that race off pit road, Rick. Yeah, the race off pit, pit road brought to you by Kroger Click List and Kyle Busch, the two tire stop, very popular with the top four. Eric Jones, Paul Menard, and William Byron also employing that same strategy. How about a little trickery? The 11 decides, no, we're going to stay out. The only one that doesn't. Chevy, the most awarded and fastest growing brand the last four years overall. Discover why at Chevy.com. Chevy, an official vehicle of NASCAR. Back at the Brickyard and after his successful pace car duties, Junior's back. He's in the crow's nest in turn three. Bagman, what have you seen so far? I've seen a lot of patience, and I've seen a lot of drivers doing a little tiptoeing out here, not wanting to push the issue, not knowing what they had underneath them. And it's been clean and green so far. Dale Jr., welcome to the telecast. Yeah, What's going on in turn here. three? Yeah, it's good to be here. I'm excited, ready to go green here. Going to see some action. First action I'll be calling all weekend, so let's get to it. And into the restart zone, green flag flying, and now we'll see if Denny Hamlin's call here to stay out is a good one. Looks like he got a little shove there from teammate Kyle Busch as he slams it into turn number one and a little bobble there out of Clint Boyer fighting for second. Boyer's got to hang on to that race car. Kyle Busch is there down to the inside. He'll storm to the number two position. Boyer back in line in third, but he's under fire from Eric Jones on the back stretch. Denny Hamlin stretching it out with those old tires. We wonder how long we'll be able to hold that lead. Side by side, Kurt Busch on the inside of William Byron. William Byron's gonna have to get into position down into turn three. If that's the smartest thing to do, Junior, just give that spot up. If not, Chase Elliott will get a run. Chase Elliott got a run anyway. Drives underneath him, getting into turn four. William Byron smart and gets to the bottom to try to block Keselowski. Jumps in front of the two of Brad Keselowski and William Byron now trying to stay in front of that group as Denny Hamlin surprisingly pulling away from Kyle Busch. 
He made the move to stay off of pit road under this competition caution. Now he's pulling away. Dropping further back in the field, you saw Joey Logano in the red and yellow number 22. He is running right now in the 13th position, and he's trying to hang on to what he's got. That car, not exactly the way he wanted it in the early going. Right now he's under fire. By Joey. Alex Bowman trying to find a way to get a run to create a pass here into three. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to get the, get the job done here. Joey's still struggling with that car down into turn three, holding up the rest of these guys behind him. This is a good shot for Bowman. It's key to turn four as you stay out a little bit longer before you get to the bottom. It helps your exit to turn four down this long straightaway, but Joey Logano doing a nice job of maintaining position. And you see the playoff points on the left side of the screen right there on the last position of making it into the playoffs, the 88 of Alex Bowman. Again, he would be the first one out if we get a new winner outside of the top 16 here at the Brickyard. He is running in the 15th position right now, and he is getting a whole lot of company. Here comes Jamie McMurray, opens the inside lane, and McMurray will pull to the inside of Bowman. That creates a lot of trouble behind Alex Bowman. He might get freight train down the back straightaway. Two, three, four cars. Look at right, Mark Trix Jr. Diving in, trying to take that position as well. It's a great example of Indianapolis. You lose momentum in turn two or turn four. They're going to gang up on you. Just kills your speed. Daniel Suarez also is trying to get him underneath Alex Bowman. We heard earlier the 78 potentially had a issue with the brake pedal. He started last in the field. It doesn't look like any issues to me, Rick. Plus 21 positions since the start of the race. Up into the 17th as we look up here, Kyle Busch and Clint Boyer continue to battle for the second position. Kyle Busch and Clint Boyer now separated by five car lengths. Boyer starting to, starting to come to life, starting to shave off a car length here and a car length there. Denny Hamlin long gone away from these two. Clint Boyer hanging in here with Kyle Busch. Strong performance from that 14 team down into turn three. You see Clint Boyer, see how low he is. That's what he's got to do. He's got to get out of the wake of that 18 car. He gets low very early. That's what he's forced to do. If he tries to stay out as late as the 18 and as long as the 18, he'll never get to the bottom because all the downforce is taken off of this car. Kevin Harvick had an uncontrolled tire on pit road. Well, the same goes for the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Yeah, you see that tire is just getting rolled with no one even near it for five or six feet towards the front of the car. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. was running 20th, currently running 25th. So recovering from the penalty, but still cost him spots as the battle for second continues to heat up between Clint Boyer and Kyle Busch. Clint Boyer right on the tail of Kyle Busch. Can't really put a run together to get a pass, but he's starting to add some more pressure, closing in even tighter. Down into turn three, Kyle Busch to the bottom. Arc on the 14 card, really nice into turn three. A lot of momentum you can build off of turn three, Junior, by running very low. There's a lot of grip there. This end of the racetrack at three and four has more grip than one and two where they're approaching. Really right now, Rick, what I'm thinking about is that right front tire on the 11 of Denny Hamlin. You heard the strategy. We showed it to you. He stayed on the racetrack. Now, remember, that Xfinity race has definitely cured the racetrack some with some rubber. I'm sure that affected their decision, but they have to be considering, was it the right one with 10 laps before the next yellow? Battle for second continues. Clint Boyer stalking Kyle Busch, trying to take that spot away. It takes several laps to set up a pass here. Boyer's getting himself in position. It takes several laps, but as each lap goes by, the tires get hotter and more worn, and that pass becomes more and more difficult to make. Kyle Busch starting to put a little distance between him and Clint Boyer. He did not hit turn three very well, though, right there. He was not on the bottom, leaving the corner. Clint Boyer was able to be on the bottom. That helped him gain. Clint Boyer is going to continue to apply this, friend, this pressure, and they're starting to run down Jimmy Hamlin just a little bit as he's too ready. Top three separating themselves. The four of Kevin Harvick with the penalty. What's going on with them, Marty? And he's back up to 23rd. He restarted 34th after this one. Restart a moment ago. Rodney Childers, after that uncontrolled tire penalty, brought him back down pit road. They put fuel in the number four car just to make sure they could stay on sequence with everybody else. Kevin told us in the pre-race show, I know at some point today we're going to be in traffic. He is in the middle of it right now in 23rd. He can't get frustrated back there, Junior, with a car because he knows he has a quick race car. Back into turn three. The 14th closed back in on the 18. A great run here toward you, Jeff. Clint Boyer's got a faster race car right now. He just can't find a way. Kyle Busch doing a very good job. That corner right there, Kyle Busch really took the air away from Clint. He 
see if Clay can get right to his rear bumper getting into one. He's got a great run now, staying right in the tire tracks so of the 18. Clint Boyer now turns the nose to the inside as they dive into turn number one, but still the advantage goes to the 18 of Kyle Busch running second. But Clint Boyer is on the back porch there. Kyle Busch looks over his shoulder, and Clint Boyer is stalking his every move. Here's Kyle, here's Clint battling for the second spot. The separation, Dale, is now three car lengths. This, this battle right here has allowed Denny Hamlin to stay comfortably in the lead, but it's still heating up between Clint Boyer and Kyle Busch down into turn three. Clint Boyer right on the bumper there. That's close enough to upset the air on the 18 car. You're watching Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Indianapolis. It's the big machine vodka 400 at the Brickyard. Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Indianapolis. This telecast presented by Golden Corral. Denny Hamlin still out front with the lead. On Wednesdays at 9 a.m., make sure to tune in to the morning drive. The Bagman on there as well as Pete Pistoni. And this week, Parker Kligerman will join the crew. That's on NASCAR Radio Channel 90. Serious axiom. Out front, Denny Hamlin, about a seven-tenth of a second lead over Kyle Busch. And Kyle Busch and Clint Boyer, that battle has continued. Kurt Busch running fourth, and behind them, the 20 of Eric Jones. Think about this 11 and Denny Hamlin. He was asked earlier in the weekend, what does no practice do to the field? And he said, you know what? I think it hurts the big three. I think not having any practice for them to work on their race car is going to help the rest of us. Right now, Marty, looks like Denny knew what he was talking about as he has a little under a one-second lead over Kyle Busch. Plus the strategy call from Mike Wheeler. That has him out front. And they're trying a little something different on the 11 car this weekend. Denny told me, I really wish we would have had practice. He's getting some good practice right now. Behind him, his teammate Kyle Busch is in second. He said, I'm too tight. I can't wrap the bottom of the corner. But the car is starting to come to him the longer they run. And Clint Boyer's in third and frustrated, saying, man, even if you have an advantage over the car in front of you, you can't pass. It's a very difficult passing situation here at Indianapolis, Kelly. 
Eric Jones a couple of spots behind them now in sixth position. Remember he took two tires during that competition caution and it sounds like Eric now has his hands full with his 20 cars. for the team to tell them got to be patient patience at Indianapolis when the Brickyard 400 is on the line that has to be very difficult as we see the 20 diving into the turn and again Eric Jones running in that sixth spot so it's Denny Hamlet Kyle Busch Clint Boyer Kurt Busch Eric Almarola Eric Jones Kyle Larson Paul Menard Chase Elliott and Brad Keselowski are the top 10 so the 11 of Denny Hamlin headed back into turn two and he's maintaining a great distance between himself and his teammate in Kyle Busch. Denny is flawless to the bottom of the racetrack but so is Kyle and so is Clint Kyle Busch there in the 18 car and of course Clint in the red white and blue number 14 car they're battling for second a note for all these guys trying to win and get into the playoffs look at Denny Hamlin out here on these old tires driving away from these two guys at least maintaining an incredible lead as the battle for second still bruised. That's a really good comment about what Hammond's doing, but behind him, Eric Amarola, he put on four tires. He started back in 14th, and he's driven himself up to fifth. So, yes, what's more important, tires or track position? Back in the pack, it appears that tires may be best, but if you can get out front in one of those first two rows, maybe you just want track position and not worry about tires. And remember, now we're on lap 30. This is the second competition caution, which is going to come out as soon as the field, or at least the top 10, get to the start finish line to complete 30 laps. They're on lap 30 now, and Denny Hamlin's still out front. Watching Eric Almarola in the number five position there, coming out of turn two. Eric running all by himself, having a good run so far. He's in the fifth position as he heads to turn three. Definitely having a great run. Eric, winless this year, but he's had several great opportunities this year. What a incredible day it would be for him to get the win today at Indy. Eric, you know that he feels like he's he has been shot, several shots to win the races this year. Just hadn't worked out. Clint Boyer on the front straightaway, taking a look, showing Kyle Busch he wants a spot. Trying to take that second spot away. Clint Boyer does it as they go into turn number one. Now they're waiting for that competition caution to come out. Dave. Kurt Busch has come to pit road in the 41 car. They will take on tires and fuel. Kurt saying the car is still pretty tight, so they'll make an adjustment for that and send him back on his way. Well, he can only take tires. They can't take fuel in this 41 because he pitted before the competition yellow. So this is a strategy call to get track position. You now see the yellow is on the racetrack that will slow the leaders down. That will allow Kurt Busch to have service without losing a lap, Marty. His teammate Kevin Harvick made the move to pit road before the competition caution came out as well. So Rodney Childers making that call once again. They're going to make sure they don't have an uncontrolled tire here, hoping to use this to their advantage. Clearly a very quick car for Kevin Harvick. Now they're going to get the track position they hope to have. What a big call for Rodney Childers. He was running 19th. He didn't know when the yellow was going to come out. And as the four rolls off pit road, the leaders are only 500 or 1,000 feet behind him on the racetrack, but 1,000 feet's enough, he'll stay on the lead lap. The gamble was that pit road would get closed as he was slowing down to get on it because when the caution comes out, they immediately close pit road. So a big gamble, but it pays off for Kevin Harvick. It pays off because now they will basically line up on the front row, teammates Kurt Busch and Kevin Harvick. So I like the strategy. I like the aggression. And look at, talk about aggression. Look at this trip to pit road. Man, he locks the tires up. I, think, I tell you one thing, Steve, that I think we're going to see. With, with, we're seeing all these cars pit, and now this is the last competition caution, but if I'm leading the race and I know people are pitting, I'm not slowing down when the caution comes up. Now I'm slowing down, but I'm not slowing down as much. I'm trying to keep that pace up to try to keep those guys in a position where you could lap them. So that's something that a little bit of communication to the 11 car, if they would have told him, hey, cars are on pit road, carry as much speed as possible, maybe he could have lapped those two cars on pit road. You gotta always be paying attention because I agree those games can be played. Take advantage. 
And another penalty for the 17 team of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. This time it's speeding on pit road. They were trying everything they could to get into the playoffs, but getting snake bit already. Get NASCAR coverage when you're on the go with NASCAR Mobile. The official app of NASCAR puts race coverage and live in-car cameras right at your fingertips. Search NASCAR in the App Store or visit NASCAR.com slash mobile. And shutting the car off as he runs around this track. But again, a speeding penalty for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He was trying to come to pit road like the 41 and the 4. Oh, my goodness. I think I heard a backer down in there. Hey, one thing to think about, guys, no practice. So no practice for pit road speed either during the day, during the weekend. Great point. Absolutely. All those details, no time on track to figure them out. Marty? Clint Boyer finishes second there as the comp caution comes out at lap 30. He said, I don't need much here. I need just a little bit, a little too tight for that 14 car. They're gonna make an air pressure adjustment. You see Danny Hamlin, middle of your screen, he was kind of mad at himself. He said, I kind of didn't run as hard as I could have there at the end of that run. I might've been able to put some of those cars a lap down. So he sort of mad at himself for that. There's gonna be a very slight air pressure adjustment on the 11 car as well. He said, he needs a little bit of front turn. For his teammate Kyle Busch, he said, on the first stop, you guys help the exit. I still need help on entry. Car too tight for Kyle Busch on entry. We'll see if that first pit stall pays off for those guys, but a lot of two tire changes there you see here on pit road, Rick. Boyer, Kozlowski, Chase Elliott, McMurray, all two tire stops, all gaining spots on pit road. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Credit One Bank, the credit card perfect for everyday purchases. Sonic's Car Hop Classic, get a quarter pound double cheeseburger or a Slinger Plus Tots for just $2.99. And buy Ford, going further so you can. Monster Energy Cup Series Racing from Indianapolis is telecast presented by Golden Corral. See a time lapse switching over from the end of the Xfinity Series race to get the cup cars all in line for this race. Marty. 
Well, it's been a busy time here on Pitt Road, Rick, for Kevin Harvick and his race team. They had to change guns, actually. The right rear gun or the rear gun failed when they came down Pitt Road under green, and they pitted before the comp caution. They had to replace that gun as we go back to green here in Indianapolis. And now Kevin Harvick restarting on this restart, 24. Clint Boyer dives on the inside of Kurt Busch. Boyer in the 14, Kurt Busch in the 41. Those two door to door into true. Busch letting it fly on the outside. Here comes Boyer to his inside. Busch with a strong power move for the top of turn number two. He'll grab the lead as they head down the back straightaway. That outside line strong on the restarts in the Xfinity race. Strong again now in the cup race as Clint, as Clint Boyer loses that lead. Going into turn three, Kurt Busch out front. The two of Keselowski with a little right rear damage hanging on in third. Yeah, that damage on the two of Keselowski, that might actually be an advantage. If you look at it, the right rear is bent outward. That might actually help him a little bit. Could be a good break for him. Kyle Busch gets by the three of Austin Dillon as they come onto the front stretch. Kyle Busch in that 18, trying to get back up toward the front where he was running most of the beginning of this stage. But it's Kurt Busch and Clint Boyer that are 1-2 through the short shoot. Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch playing catch up now as they are running seventh and eighth. Make that sixth and seventh respectively. They've got a lot of work to do. And now they're back in traffic as Hamlin is on the move to the inside of McMurray. Off two. A little side draft on the side of McMurray. Moves away to get away from the side draft that he can create on the same car. Now he gets help from his teammate as both of them are going to make that pass on Jamie McMurray down into turn three. And Kyle Busch taking full advantage of that opportunity that was opened up. Late move, following Hamlin. Very smart. Interesting to see how these two cars are behind other cars. We saw how hard it was for Clint Boyer to pass. We had a fast car. First time that the 11 is really back in the pack. Hamlin and Kyle Busch running sixth and seventh now as they're trying to work their way back up front. It's Kurt Busch, Clint Boyer, Brad Keselowski, and Chase Elliott in front of them. Tag team action there between Joe Gibbs Racing teammates, Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch. Hamlin in the 11, Kyle Busch in the 18. They are separated by four car lengths now as they race down the back stretch. Denny Hamlin sets his sight on the Chevrolet of Chase Elliott out front. He's got his teammate right behind him, Kyle Busch, another strong Gibbs car. Those guys are working their way through this top five. At Denny Hamlin, we've seen a lot of speed from him in practice recently, but not the speed in the race. Can they have the day-to-day -day where they keep that speed at Darlington? And think about the poles they've had on the good practice they've had, but in the race, they struggle. Maybe today's the day they can turn the tide. And Junior, you pointed out the damage to the right rear of the two of Brad Keselowski. Almost a little bit of maybe extra aerodynamic help there, but they didn't mean to have that happen. No, and it's flared, like you mentioned, to the outside. And it happened here on pit road. You see Brad Kozlowski trying to turn into his pit stall right there. The 12 barely contacts and appeals that quarter panel out towards the right. A nice big flare on it. So I don't know how much of a help it is, but I think it's at least directionally correct. And if it's not directionally correct right now or a help, the crew can certainly make it one. Got to thank his teammate after the race for giving him that opportunity. Look at Denny Hamlin bearing, bearing down on Chase Elliott. Put pressure on him to try to take the fifth position here. He's going to get the inside run. He does go to the inside. So now Denny Hamlin trying to fight by the nine of William Byron. Excuse me, Chase Elliott in the nine. And now he's going to bring the 18 with him. Kyle Busch takes the spot away as well. Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch working together toward the front. Both those drivers easing to the inside of Chase Elliott at the entrance of turn them on. Not only have they completed the pass, they've pulled away now by five, maybe six car lengths. And the 11 and the 18. Hamlin and Kyle Busch continue to make hay. Kenny Hamlin down the back straightaway. Still just a few car lengths ahead of his teammate Kyle Busch. These guys working together. Kyle's not putting enough pressure on Denny to upset his car as they work through this top five. Yeah, you're exactly right. They work very well together. Denny Hamlin's opened the hole. Kyle Busch has gone with him. Really, Denny's done most of the work here in helping these two get back to the front. Behind these two Gibbs cars right here, a few positions back. The one of Jamie McMurray currently in seventh. Some breaking news today. Chip Ganassi told the Associated Press that Jamie McMurray wouldn't be full-time, wouldn't be back at Chip Ganassi next year. There had been rumors, speculation about where that driver would be going, who would be driving the one. And I don't think we have that answer yet. But Dave, 
right out of the owner's mouth that Jamie McMurray not back in the one in 2019. Yep, that report also said that he was offered the Daytona 500 in 2019 and also a managerial position, but no response yet from Jamie's camp. Interestingly, on that last stop, guys, they took two left side tires on the one. And with that story of Jamie McMurray leading this race is Kurt Busch, who has said that he wasn't more than likely going to come back to Stuart Haas Racing and that the one of Jamie McMurray was where he was going to end up. At least that was one of the options. So that kind of puts that ball rolling as far as the rumor mill of where are people going to end up in the Cup Series in 2019. Let's go NASCAR nonstop. Right front of the 78. You saw it nonstop. The third caution has come out in Indianapolis, and what a week it has been for the 78 team. Martin Trucks Jr., Cole Pern. The announcement came earlier this week stating that the 78 team would cease operations in 2019. Barney Visser has said that they will not field a car for 2019. And a very difficult time for the entire crew driver of the 78 team as they now will go behind the wall to try to fix whatever happened under the hood that pushed that hood up and a few drivers taking advantage of this caution coming back to pit road. Dave. Rick we had reported that Jamie McMurray running seventh took left side tires last time. This time they go to the right side. Looks like they'll change all four for McMurray and have the ch chassis adjustment Marty. Kevin Harvick's going to come down pit road in this uh, new rear gun that's on the uh, rear tire changer. Everything is fine with that. So they got all the lug nuts tight under the last caution. Going to put on tires here. They're also going to clean the grill. They said there's a lot of grass on the grill. Ryan Blaney also on pit road. They're going to fix that damage where he made contact with his teammate Brad Keselowski. He's on pit road as well. You see Harvick leaving 14-5 on his stop. Well, you saw the smoke out of the 78 of Martin Truex Jr. Here he is heading into turn one. Can't see anything obvious, but something right there. You see parts and pieces bouncing off the car. Smoke. It looks like all the tires have air. We're going to have to see what broke on the 78.
NASCAR Drive is your live race day companion. You can watch throughout the broadcast, select alternate camera angles, or ride along with in-car video. Your favorite drivers visit NASCAR.com slash drive or download the NASCAR mobile app today. So we took another peek at this 78 replay, and what we're hearing, it was a brake failure. Remember the report early in the race about a squishy pedal or a brake issue on the 78? Well, look right here as he goes down, gets on the brakes into turn one. The left front, it looks to me like a rotor. The left front brake rotor comes apart. It, it destroys the hood. The hood is up, and I'm expecting all this smoke. I can't believe there's that much smoke from brake fluid. So what I imagine is as those parts and pieces came off the left front corner, they caught some an oil line or maybe the oil pan or something in the oiling system. You see right here Martin Truex Jr. explaining to his crew. Remember, no laps on the racetrack. This is an issue they had from the drop of the green flag. You have to ask yourself, Rick, would they have been able to catch this if we would have practice? But no practice means a lot of issues have already taken place at the start of this race. Let's check in with the guys around the track. We'll start with the bag man. Well, what's impressive to me, Rick, is how Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch have been able to rally their way through the field. They've been picking them off one after another. Hamlin, the escort to Kyle, they're just weaving their way through, making progress, and I think that they're on tap for a great day here at Indy if everything stays together. Dale, what about you? Yeah, I'll add on to that and, and, and say Clint Boyer is someone who's impressed me. I did not see him putting together a pass to take that second position away from Kyle Busch when he did. I just didn't feel like that he had a strong enough car, even uh, you know, stronger than Kyle, to be able to make the pass in dirty air. But he did somehow, some way. I'm going to keep my eye on Clint Boyer going forward. And you mentioned Clint Boyer. Well, that is teammate Kurt Busch. Kurt Busch drove away from Clint Boyer. So Kurt Busch showing a lot of, lot of speed here today. And remember, the playoffs start next week. I wouldn't sleep on Kurt Busch. Dave, what you got, bud? Martin Truex Jr. is who I have, and we heard from the pace laps, Martin, that you were concerned about the brakes. What did you feel going to turn three there? Uh, just left front brake rotor exploded, went through the hood. I thought I blew a tire initially going into one there, and I was like, oh, this is going to hurt, but the car kept turning, luckily, and I was able to keep it off the wall. So uh, just brake rotor exploded. I don't know what was going on with the brakes. We had major issues um, from the start of the race, and uh, you know, obviously, you know, uh, all that con kind of compounded into having a, a break issue, a major break issue. So it's unfortunate. Uh, auto owners Toyota was really fast. And as hard as it is to pass here, we were getting there, making our way to the front. And I felt like any time we got clean air, we had really good speed. So wish we could have uh, raced all day and seen what we could have done with them. But hopefully uh, we'll get this bad luck out of the way in the playoffs uh, before the playoffs start next week. With the announcement this week, I know you guys are trying to keep a stiff upper lip this weekend, Martin. Well, yeah, I mean, we're, uh, we got a, we got a great bunch of guys here, a great bunch of hardcore racers. And, uh, you know, nobody's going to put their heads down and give up. I can promise you that. So we're going to come out swinging at Vegas. Important stuff comes next week. Playoff starts, guys. Denny Hamill made the call. This could affect the big three more than anyone. And already one of them out of the race. Field approaching the Geico restart zone. And coming up on lap 46. Now just five laps to go until the end of stage one, Denny Hamlin aggressively to the inside, side by side for the lead as they head to Eubank, man. Hamlin took the look to the inside, Rick almost stacked the three wide, backed away, and let Kurt Busch and Clint Boyer battle for the lead. Here's Boyer to the inside on the back straightaway. Clint Boyer side drafts the 41 of Kurt Busch, drives away, trying to defend against the side draft himself, takes the position down into turn three here. Kurt Busch in second, Denny Hamlin close in third. You saw how hard Clint Boy was working to get the lead. Finally was able to make it happen. Let's see if he has the speed to just drive away from this group. Now we'll see how aggressive the 42 of Kyle Larson will be. He's all over the back bumper. The 18 has a run now trying to take that spot away. Working to the inside, he pulls away a long ways away from the 18 and completes the pass as he gets into one. A textbook Indianapolis pass. Set him up off four, drop to the inside, drop the hammer, complete the pass before you even reach turn one. That's exactly what Kyle Larson did as now he pulls away from Kyle Busch and slowly starts to close in on Denny Hamlin. Brent Boyer still with that lead. Back here, Kyle Larson with a great move on Kyle Busch. Trying to take up, take his run up there and fix it up with his good buddy, Denny Hamlin, as they go through turn three here. And Kyle Larson, being, it was very impressive. I didn't really see him having the speed prior to this caution, but right now, they're driving by Bush and then running Hamlin down. Don't count him out to win.
win this race today. Rick, I was trying to figure out what looked different. It's the sun. We haven't seen it for four days here at Indianapolis. Well, it started to poke through the clouds. We'll have to see if that starts to continue to adjust on the racetrack and see what crew chiefs make adjustments to catch up. Leaders in the short shoot, headed to two. Clint Boyer, Kyle, uh, Kurt Busch, then Denny Hamlin, then Kyle Larson, then Kyle Busch. They work their way onto the back straightaway. Things are starting to tighten up there between the 42 and the 18. Yeah, the 18 trying to regain that lost position to Kyle Larson. He's pushing the 42 of Kyle Larson up to his teammate, Denny Hamlin. That gap's closing up as well. They see the copy of the screen coming to two to go at the end of this stage. So. You know, every position, every point matters. We see people, you know, make the playoffs, not make the playoffs, advance in the playoffs by only one point. So everything matters right now. And Jeff, why are we all surprised that Clint Boyer's up front? Because he admits Indianapolis is not his best racetrack. And he's allowed a lot to fight for here, though. He has two wins so far this year, but he has yet to win a stage. Two laps to go. Boyer would love to finish it off. Way back in the pack in 23rd is Joey Logano. We talked about no practice for these teams. Joey Logano and his team actually changed a left front shock on pit road. That's no practice coming into Indianapolis, but Boyer doing a fantastic job here leading out front right now with two to go. Right here, Clint Boyer just driving away from Kurt Busch. Trying to get that first stage win of the year. Had lunch with Clint Boyer yesterday after the race was rained out, and Clint Boyer said, while we're having lunch, this is a place where I don't feel I run very well. It's a racetrack that I don't look forward to coming to. Even though it's Indianapolis, it's not a place that I feel comfortable on. Boyer's comfortable right now, at least from where we're observing. Low on the racetrack and two, exactly where you want to be. He's got speed in the car, Dale, and he's keeping his teammate at arm's length. Yeah, so they keep you out on Clint Boyer, but he's not really driving away from his teammate, Kurt Busch. And behind them, Denny Hamlin is closed in to that threesome. And it's pretty interesting to see these guys, how they're working these lines, even though it's a one groove track. There are things they're doing on entry and exit to make gains. Yeah, see Kyle Busch way in the back of this line. He made an inch of move off of three to try to Get a run on Larson. Not going to happen. Clint Boyer is going to win this stage. Clint Boyer is going to win stage number one. It'll be a 1 2 finish for Stuart Haas Racing. Tony Stewart's grandfather was a mobile oil delivery man in Indianapolis when Tony was a child. And he's got to feel pretty proud of seeing the mobile 1 14 make its way to the number one spot at the end of stage one, as well as Kurt Busch finishing second. 1 2 for Stuart Haas Racing.
Monster Energy Cup Series racing from the Brickyard. This telecast presented by Golden Corral. Stage one is complete, and the field making the way onto pit road. Dave. Kurt Busch finishes second in that stage. Took four tires the first two times he had the opportunity to. Assume the crew might do the same here. Car handling well. Kurt just needs that clean air out front, Marty. Mike Magaratis told Clint Boyer, nice job on that restart driver. An impressive run for him in that stage. Again, their first stage win of the year. They said, do you need anything? He said, I don't think so. A little tape on the grill, that's it. Same case for Denny Hamlin who told his guys, boys, we're really good right here. So some tape on the grill of the 11 car, that's going to be the only adjustment for him as well. All these guys, four fresh Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel. And as they race off of Pitt Road, it'll be the 12 of Ryan Blaney gaining 11 spots. A two tire change, everybody else four tires except for Regan Smith. Hey, race fans, when in Las Vegas, stay where the racers stay at the South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa, your ultimate pit stop on the Las Vegas Strip. South Point, everything you want, all under one roof. And time now for today's Toyota Social Spotlight. We asked fans, what do you think the best post-race traditions or celebrations are? And of course, while we're here at Indianapolis, yeah. course, kissing the bricks, Definitely one of the top responses. Also, Alan Kulwicki. Yeah, you got to love the Polish victory lap. Alan would turn driver's side to the fans so they could see him as he celebrated. Then the six shooters at Texas Motor Speedway. Obviously something very enjoyable for the fans when they get to see that in victory lane. And how about the backflip? Carl Edwards, haven't seen that in a long time. No, I would I would celebrate that way if I could do a backflip. <laughs> It'd be a backfall, maybe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Parker. Well, guys, how about Paul Menard there in second, staying out once again? He actually told me yesterday that he and Greg Irwin planned on doing this. They said they were going to basically put themselves on old tires in front of the field and see what sticks. They were just going to throw a bunch of things at the wall and see what sticks. We'll see if this sticks for them to stay up front and maybe get a win to get in the playoffs. Well, he did it here. Back in 2011, he won this race. 
And if you are Alex Bowman, 16th on the playoff grid, you do not like to see Paul Menard running well because that win would move him into the playoffs. This is what it looked like back in 2011. Great strategy call by Slugger Labby and great execution by Paul Menard working every ounce out of that fuel tank. Huge win for the Menard family. John Menard had been a sponsor and had race teams race here at Indianapolis for so many years, but it was his son that got him his first win at Indianapolis. Couldn't write it better, right? It's it's unbelievable. So we continue to see we saw some speeding penalties, uncontrolled tires. Well, the, the mistakes on pit road continue. This time for the 41 of Kurt Bush. It looks pretty smooth. It comes around, tires come off, but watch the exchange. The left rear tire won't go on. The Jack finally goes up a little bit higher. That allows the tire to go on, and because of that, there were spots lost on pit road. Dave? Steve, sometimes a moment of levity can help you overcome that. Listen. Got a quick question. I don't know why the water pressure would be really high. Water tip. All right, what's your pressure at? Mine or the cars? The car, the car is at 90. So Kurt laughs. Yeah, my water pressure is pretty high, but the cars is at 90. The reason they reason that the gauge may be stuck, and so they think the car is okay. Kurt not too hot, but trying to overcome now after losing many spots on pit road. How about that? The 18 of Kyle Busch trying to warm the tires up just hit the grass. I watched that. He was cleaning his tires on the left front, dipped down into mud spray. Watch this. The 18 of Kyle Busch. Wow. Be careful. That's soft down there, but I love that shot out of the back of the pace car. Look at those guys coming to the green. Yeah, the field approaching. The Geico restart zone once again. Side by side, fighting for the lead. Kyle Busch, Paul Menard. Kyle Busch rockets away from Paul Menard and brings the four of Kevin Harvick with him. Kyle Busch out front. Now the fight for second. Kevin Harvick has it. Paul Menard drops back to third. Kyle Busch, like he's shot out of a cannon, will go back to the lead. Kevin Harvick goes back to second. Challenge for third. William Byron. Look at him go. He'll dial up the inside of the racetrack. He'll go to third, and Menard's hands are full on the back straightaway. His hands are full with more competition. The three of Austin Dillon trying to get a run, trying to get to that quarter panel to be able to make a pass, and I think he's going to be there in turn three. No. Paul Menard tries to shut the door, but not quite. Coming out of turn three, Austin Dillon to the inside. Yeah, Paul didn't quite get down early enough. That opened the door for Austin Dillon. He's going to take advantage of it. The field's all mixed up right now with different pitch batters in the middle of the pack and up front. Well, you mentioned Paul Menard. How about the 20-year-old William Byron driving that famed 24? Five times that card number has won the Brickyard 400. Could he make it six for the card number, get his first career win? How about two and three wide diving into turn number one, all still fighting for position. Everybody stacked up, coming back into turns one and two mid-pack. Here's Trevor Bain. He'll pull to the inside, make that Matt Kenseth. He'll move to the inside of A.J. Allmendinger on the back straightaway. Matt Kenseth got help from seven-time champion Jimmy Johnson down the back straightaway. Down into turn three. They make that pass. Moving forward here over to you, Jeff. I've been watching Matt Kenseth. Matt Kenseth has a good car. He's running about 12, 13, 14. Running with Jimmy Johnson. Some pretty good cars running this race. So Matt's running very well in this car today. Parker. Yes, he is. He's just a little bit loose right now to start on the runs. But, you know, Matt has talked a lot about what he's been able to add to that race team and felt like they've been making improvements, but it hasn't been shown up on the result sheet. Well, right now, the speed he has, he might be able to get that on the result sheet this race. Peters back into turn two. Clint Boyer in the 14 on the move. He'll pull down to the inside of A.J. Allmendinger. Clint Boyer now running in the eighth position. Yeah, that 14's been fast all day long as he moves through the field. Seeing Joey Logano struggling a little bit to turn two. Back here, look at this pack of cars down into turn three. 19. And look, we got a crash. The 43's in the wall in turn three here. Spinning down in front of cars. Oh! oh. Contact. The 51 couldn't get slowed down enough. Cloud, I believe. So Bubba right? Wallace in the 43 initiates this, and then the 51 slides into him yep. of David Starr. Watching this coming down into turn three, Bubba got loose, got turned by someone coming down and got through the grass. Did not contact the outside yeah. wall, as far as I can tell, yeah. but the contact with the 51 is going to end both their days. Let's take a look here. And guys, I just got word that Bubba Wallace came across the radio and said his brakes went out, Junior. Okay. Yeah, he's he. so he tried to straighten up the entry. I mean, that's the same thing that happened to him at Pocono. 
And so you, you know, your instincts are to aim left and try to, you know, go through the grass and slow the car down some way, somehow. And he did a great job staying out of the, you know, staying out of the wall with the issue he had. But without brakes, he can't stop the car as he's rolling down in front of oncoming traffic. Uh, typically, he would have been on the brakes and be able to stop the car and stop that accident there from happening. We talked about Pocono. This is exactly what happened here. We look at this replay down into turn one. Very scary accident. Really glad to see Bubba get out of the car after such a terrible hit there. It's the same issues or similar issues here today. And it's going to end his day. But nothing that he could do there to keep the car from rolling down in front of that oncoming traffic. And that's the only issue with, you know, for those guys is they, they you know, can't avoid that car just coming down into traffic in front of them. You know, Rick again catching his breath. I was say, Rick, you and I were having this. This is the second brake failure we've seen today, and I have to think that perhaps this was, by the way, this was back in Pocono, so yeah, we're seeing it. But this was today here. He's got a little bit of brake, as you can see, the tires locking up somewhat. So he had enough to get the car slowed down to keep it out of the fence. So, Junior, I was thinking, you know, we hadn't talked much about just the calendar. You know, this race used to be in the summer. The grip was low. The track temperature very high. Here we are in September. It's a much cooler day. Track temperature much higher. It seems like they have more speed. Is there a chance that the overall lower lap times is more abusive on the brakes and the teams just didn't prepare for it? I don't know, but it's surprising to have two brake issues already in the race. Yeah, those brake, those brake issues or the brake heat is something you monitor throughout the weekend, and those guys did not get that opportunity to do that. So understanding exactly how much brake heat you're creating, the teams don't know. So going into today, it's hard for them to continue to monitor that during the race. You, you're not able to really do that. So, you know, they're, they're having some issues, and, and we may see this continue throughout the day with some of the teams. As far as it gets worse as you get back further into the pack, and particularly where Bubba's been running, get in that dirty air, you're going to use the brakes more, the car's going to be tighter, and you're going to use more and more brake deeper down in the corner and create more and more heat, generate more heat. And so continue to see this or continue to monitor this throughout the day and see if we continue to see brake issues for the rest of these teams. I think a, an issue we need to think about as well is that's only three laps since the restart. So, you know, it, it may be a brake heat issue, but it's only, only would be a brake heat issue because it's spiking the temperature very high after these long straightaways. We see problems at Pocono and Indy because you have these long straights and the brakes cool so much that you get on the brakes and they instantly heat up. And that's what can be the problem is actually maybe too much cooling, not enough cooling in some cases. Marty. And guys, a moment ago, you saw Kyle Busch when he was scuffing in the tires before this last restart. He swerves down, hits the grass. It looks very innocuous, like nothing bad happened there, but something did happen. Take a listen on the radio. When I was scuffing tires, I touched grass. And ever since then, the steering has been tougher. And you can see him kind of trying to shake that grass off the tires there. So, Jeff, the steering tougher is the quote from Kyle Busch. What could be going on with that 18? Yeah, I'd be honest, honest Marty, I'm not really sure. I, I don't know what could have happened with the steering uh, to make it so that it's harder to turn in that situation, uh, unless it's just a temporary situation where it will go away. But I'm not real sure what permanently he could have damaged with just driving through the mud there.
Scott Dixon, the points leader of the Verizon IndyCar Series, the four-time IndyCar champion looking for number five, but Alexander Rossi is right on his back bumper, trying to take away that advantage. Will Power, the Daytona 500 winner this year, third in points, and Joseph Newgarden, the young one, winning the 2017 IndyCar Championship a year ago, currently fourth in the point standings. Can Verizon IndyCar Series points leader Scott Dixon hold on and claim that fifth title you can find out Sunday when IndyCar crowns a champion on NBCSN. Coverage of the Grand Prix of Sonoma begins at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. It is a double points race, and that means that that 29-point advantage that Scott Dixon has over Alexander Rossi could disappear with a double points race. Look at that tough track. I mean, the hills of Sonoma. I mean, they run a little longer course than the stock cars. They come kind of back in the call it what you want, carousels, a bunch of different names to it. I'm not going to get into corner names at the moment, <laughs> but it's a longer course, very difficult. I mean, Sonoma, the twists and turns of Sonoma, we've seen it with stock cars, and it's not any easier in IndyCar. Swerving around now, the 18 of Kyle Busch has mentioned that the steering, not what it was before he just touched the grass when he was warming the tires up. Rick, I got another angle on the Bubba Wallace crash. We can see entering turn three exactly what Bubba does. I'm not sure how, how this happened or why he, he must have touched the brake pedal, noticing no brake pressure and just immediately turned left. All four tires were up on the car as he was sliding by, so it didn't blow a tire and make that turn. That had to have been the driver input. And, uh, you know, it's a very scary situation. He tried to defuse it. Kelly. And when Bubba Wallace just released from the infield care center, and as you just said, we thought that incident seemed reminiscent of Pocono. What did you yeah, feel? I thought the same thing. I uh, uh, scared the hell out of me for a second. And it spun around so fast. Um, and I think I dropped the window net before I even spun out to let everybody know I'm fine. Uh, but after it slowed down and got on track, I said, we're done. Our brakes are, I think they blew out, broke, blew up or something. And then we got killed there for like an hour and a half later. So unfortunate. Uh, we got to go back to the shop and figure out if it was brakes or if a tire come apart and, and rip the brake line off. But I had no sign of, of any indication before. It was just that instant. It just went around. So unfortunate. Uh, I thought we were starting to make some headway. We were struggling on uh, center exit, but uh, just glad it wasn't like Pocono again. So glad to see you. Okay. Thanks, Bubba. Thank Marty. Well, Kelly, we have pit strategy all over the map. Some teams have pitted at 32, some at 42, some at 52. Adam Stevens is among those who pitted at 32. When would you have to come to pit road, Adam? We can make it into the pit window, which was the plan there once we got those quick cautions. Lee, we really didn't want to see these last couple. Some of these guys with this long caution will probably come top off and stretch it, and we're going to give up a lot of track position. But uh, kind of made our bet at this point and can't predict the future, so we'll see what happens. Kyle said the steering's a little bit harder after he kind of brushed the grass there. Any concern? There's a concern, yes, but until we can open the hood and look at it, you know, uh, he just kind of drove it through the grass there warming the tires. But uh, as long as he didn't knock the belt off, I think it'll be okay. All right, Kyle Busch out front, Adam Stevens playing the pit strategy and uh, didn't really want to see this last caution, Steve. You know, I love the honesty, right? He said, this was our plan. We didn't want to see these yellows. Now we're on the wrong plane. We're going to use a little track position. And you ask him about his car, and he basically goes, yeah, I'm worried. If you knew I was wrong, I would take it. So we'll just have to keep in mind, these guys are very successful. Brickyard 400 winners, two of the last three years.
Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Indianapolis. This telecast presented by Golden Corral. On Saturday, NBCSN has the NASCAR Xfinity Series in Las Vegas for the final race of their regular season. That race coverage beginning at 5 p.m. And we saw a great one earlier today out of the Xfinity Series right here at the Brickyard. I mean, where should we start? Two, three, four wide racing. And I'm not exaggerating. When I say four wide racing, we saw a four wide finish right here to the end of stage one. John Hunter Nemechek, I'm going to go left. Ryan Priest, well, I'm going to go right. Looks like four yeah. wide down the interstate. Allgaier thought he had this stage one, and he ended up fourth. Yeah. They were separated by thousandths of a second. Yeah, that was for the end of stage one. Allgaier once again gets beat in the photo finish. Yep. I guess who will have the last laugh, Rick. Yeah, that was the fight for the stage two finishing second. And he ends up third. Checkered flag comes out because it was another dominating performance by the seven of Justin Allgaier, and he gets to kiss the bricks with the family. Parker. Guys, Paul Menard, who was in fifth place when this caution came out, just came down pit road. He had a right rear tire going down, as you see right there, completely destroyed, came down and changed four, four Goodyear tires. Unfortunate for a team that used great strategy to put them in a position to win here. Well, you know, they had to be debris when the 43 loss breaks. I'm sure it put debris everywhere, made a run over something. Back into the restart zone, Kyle Busch back into the gas quickly. He leaves Kevin Harvick as they dive into turn number one. Harvick holding on to second, and then there comes William Byron in the 24. He's up to third once again. Austin Dillon on the outside trying to grab fourth. Kyle Busch, such a beast on restarts. He'll get away with the lead. Harvick to second, William Byron to third, and now the stacking up of traffic begins as Matt Kenton and others all go at it there on the back straightaway. Down the back straightaway is a hit into turn three. There's tons of speedy draw down here from the Bubba Wallace crash. I'm looking at Jimmy Johnson on the outside there. He loses the spot to Denny Hamlin. Look at those guys working through that speedy draw. Everybody seemed to get through there okay. Nobody with a big slip. Jimmy Johnson trying to run Denny Hamlin back down. Rick, you see the two leaders pulling away. Well, the third place car is the one that caught my attention. That 24, who's under attack right now by Matt Kenseth, looks to have a little damage on the right rear quarter panel behind the right rear tire. That's definitely got a very sensitive area. Will hurt the 24 as Matt Kenseth continues to attack. Battle for third. Kenseth opens up the inside lane. He is there. He completes the pass. Matt Kenseth in that number six car goes to position number three. I have to imagine when Matt Kenseth took the opportunity to come back and drive these race cars. Oh, we got a crash off of turn two. Big rack involved. You see the 47 as well as the 88. So AJ Allmendinger in the 47. A lot of damage to that race car. Saw the 88 of Alex Bowman trying to avoid, but the right front bent up, as well as some damage to the left rear and the right rear. I think this is the last thing Alex Bowman wanted to see where he's at in the points position. Remember, it's not about points. No one's going to beat him in points. But now, you know, it's a kind of a race between him and Jimmy Johnson, 15th to 16th. A new winner is what they're afraid of. And now, right now, with all this damage, you're going to assume his day is going to be done. That's going to keep him in 16th. That means if we do have a new winner, He's out. And that would secure Jimmy Johnson's position because Jimmy Johnson is not going to finish class below half full guy. Alex Bowman. So. so, Yeah, Jimmy Johnson, you hate to see a teammate have struggles, but maybe not a smile, but maybe relief. A relief little relief. There, yeah. But obviously disappointed that a teammate has this kind of an issue. Looks like Amendinger's loose underneath the 88. They get together and head into the fence. Heavy contact with the right rear quarter panel for the 88. That was a fight for 16th, Junior. Look at the 41. Kurt Busch and the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse splitting the two spinning race cars. Another look oh as they boy. catch the wall. Yeah, the 47 just got into the back of the 88. Both of them sliding into that outside wall and then a hard contact for Almondinger on the inside wall. You know, Rick, the safer barriers are getting their work out here in Indianapolis, but the first racetrack to have them. Great safety innovation, the first track that NASCAR goes to that had safer barriers here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. 
don't want to test them but they've been tested a couple of times already today. Riding along with Ricky Stenhouse Junior. To the inside he went was able to avoid. And the wreckers are definitely getting a workout as well today. AJ Hominenger just not the year. They had well, one little bright spot early in the Sonoma race and that went away with a missed shift and man it's just nothing seems to be going right for the 47 and now we have the 18 of Kyle Busch we heard Adam Stevens say at some point we're going to have to pit he chose now's the time gives up a lot of track position to come down pit road Parker you see Matt Kenseth in there Ford Goodyear tire circle field what a great run for Matt Kenseth pit out of third place Marty the 18 Parker was in such a box to Steve's point they had to come pit down down pit road at some point Adam Stevens said we're going to take a long stop here they're going to take some Packer out of the right front Kyle feels like he's on the splitter the longer they run so they feel like now is the time to make that adjustment they were going to have to come down pit road about lap 75 or 78 anyway so here they are on lap 68 coming down pit road for Kyle Busch giving up that track position but hoping to put themselves in a better position for later in the race. Little adjustments made again. No practice, no qualifying. You're watching Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Indianapolis. It's the big, big machine vodka 400 at the Brickyard. I want to show you some of the things these guys are learning as this day goes on. We talk about no practice. Well, look at all the tape on the front of this car for Matt Kenseth. Those guys are understanding since they didn't get the practice and understand how much tape to have on the car, they're being a they're able to add more and more with each stop to push the temperature of the car up. And that also helps the downforce with the car. Just that small piece of tape, they've, they've added about three pieces there. Each one of those does a tremendous amount of improvement to the downforce. I love this when Steve put that on the front of the car. Rick, there's not many adjustments that are free, and it's not completely free. You give up a little water temperature, but it's like, it is free grip. Downforce, downforce, downforce. Cooler temperatures helping out as they come back into the restart zone. And so much action taking place. The 11 on the left side. The 9 on the right side as once again Kevin Harvick having success on the restart. This time Kevin Harvick's going to take the lead 
and try to run away with it. 14 of Clint Boyer in his tire tracks. William Byron did not have the best of restarts. He got shuffled back to the fourth position. On the flip side, Kevin Harvick is hammered down on the back stretch. You're right. You got to be aggressive on those restarts. William Byron will have to do better next time. Down the back straightaway to turn three. Clint Boyer in second place. Followed by the 12th car, and then William Byron in fourth. Yeah, William Byron, that's the second time he didn't get a good restart. You see Alex Bowman with the car rub. They're trying to get their car fixed. A lot of damage on that car, Marty. And they tried to get it fixed, Jeff, but you can see the tire rub. They've told him to bring it back to pit road. They have no time left on the damage vehicle policy for NASCAR. They're currently at 5.05, meaning they only have 55 seconds left. If you can clear minimum speed, they clear that clock, but they're never going to make it, guys. Yeah, he'd have to complete a lap, and it looks like with the tire rubbing there, that would be very dangerous for the driver to stay out in that condition. And the worst part for that is that puts his playoff hopes in the hands of other competitors. Someone like William Byron right here who's fighting off Denny Hamlin and Kyle Larson could go to victory lane and we see a winner outside the top 16. That would eliminate Alex Bowman from the playoffs in the final week of the regular season. Denny Hamlin, the man on the move, he's at fifth right now. Kyle Larson just behind him. They're all chasing Harvick, Boyer, Blaney, and Almarola. Almarola, new player into the top five, currently running fourth. And we're hearing that all cars on the track have met the minimum speed. So maybe Alex Bowman is able to get back now to pit road and they can do some work on that. He won't be on the clock. Yeah, Alex Bowman just ran a 55-22, and we saw all the tires smoking and all the things that were going on, and that you see now he's pitting. Now he can pit, and they can work on the car as much as they want because they met minimum speed. But I'm going to put that on Alex Bowman. Great job by just ignoring that smoke, knowing he could have blown a right front tire, but he took the risk and made that minimum speed. Now they can go to work and fix that car. And he stays out, which is something that, Steve, you mentioned. Now at least it's back in his hands. At least he can get out there and try to battle, although it will be very difficult as he's going laps down now to battle with Jimmy Johnson to make sure that he stays in the playoffs. It is going to be difficult, and you see this battle between Denny Hamlin and Kyle Larson. That is the battle for the fifth position. Kyle Larson trying to keep up with Denny Hamlin. Hamlin's been the class of the field, although he's not at the point. He still has got a strong race car, and Larson's just trying to inch closer to him, Dale, just trying to get that slipstream as they work their way to the front. Yeah, Hamlin's got a fast car. He's trying to close in on Almarola down into turn three here. Larson close to his tail here, trying to get a run, trying to create some speed. Both these cars are very fast. That's why Andy is so hard, Junior. You're hard to be a little bit quicker than somebody else's, but you lose so much down for us in the corners, it's hard to keep up with them. Larson four seconds behind race leader Kevin Harvick. And Larson again trying to catch up with Denny Hamlin. Hamlin closing the gap little by little against Eric Almarola, who has fourth. So Hamlin inching away and inching closer to that fourth position. Slowly but surely, Hamlin is starting to catch Eric Almarola, who's having a fantastic run this afternoon. That car in turn two, it's flawless. To the bottom of the racetrack, it hugs nice and tight, and then he swings it out wide on the back straightaway off two. Yeah, he's running a great, great line, great speed in the car. They're closing in on Blaney just a little bit. Three tenths fast to the last lap. Blaney's running a 49.95, a, a 67 to Almarola. Yeah, way out front of these guys. Yet yeah, initially, thank Kevin Harvick. Kevin Harvick's about a half a second faster than the field. You mentioned the lap times that Blaney had run. Well, Harvick's down 49 flat. That's incredibly fast. Drop back three positions, and you get to Chase Elliott currently in the eighth position. He's six and a half seconds behind race leader Kevin Harvick. Chase Elliott with an up and down day so far. Finds himself in the top 10, but he is some seven seconds behind the race leader. Elliott comes to turn two following his teammate. That's the car right in front of him. That's William Byron. As both those drivers now off two. And now they're joined by Jamie McMurray in the one car. Yeah, Wade Byron dropped the seventh since this restart. Trying to stop the bleeding here is Chase Elliott trying to put the pressure on. Trying to be able to get up there and disrupt the air around that 24 car so he can get a run and make a pass. But a good day for William Byron. William Byron, a rookie, you know, young driver, came into the Xfinity Series here. Caution. Caution right now on the racetrack. Yeah, we got a car spun off a of turn two. 23 car. J.J. Yaley. 
Looks like he's got a flat tire for some, some kind here. of an yeah, issue there. Four tires he spun around. See the car buckling. Would you say that is a Burt Reynolds throwback paint scheme on there for the 23? Paying respect to the late Burt Reynolds. And the tire coming apart for the 23 of Yaley. An air issue. Yeah, just inside another car, we've seen this, how fast these corners are. You need all the downforce, all the side force, and it looks like underneath that other car, the 23 loses the grip. JJ spins around and makes slight contact with the tire barrier here. Yeah, the car, he's lapping there. LaJoy is a lap down. Made contact with the right side on the outside fence as well in that altercation. Yaley, a very established dirt racer, was also a part of BC 39 took place on Thursday night in the infield here at Indianapolis, which you see right here. That's just inside turn three. And look at the pack stands, a popular, popular race. Over 115 cars entered. Think about that, 115 cars for one race. And the thing about this track is it's, it's permanent. This is gonna be here and this is gonna, you know, it's gonna be an opportunity for them to run these dirt races all week long leading up to the Indy 500 and the Brickyard 400. And I think that's really important, Dale, that you mentioned that because think about that. That just adds to the entertainment value. You come to a racetrack, you just try to pick which races you want to come go. You can come here, see the historic Brickyard and watch a little dirt racing. Just so many options when you come out to try to spend your entertainment dollars. You see on the right half of the screen that 24 of William Byron on pit road, Parker. And he leads the field here of guys who decided to pit. They were last on pit road, lap 32. His crew chief, Darian Grubb, came across the radio and said that once they do this stop, they only have one more stop to finish the race. Just struggling with being a little bit tight off the corner, Dave. Brad Keselowski was 12th. He said, this far back, I'm okay with putting on tires and charging back through the field. Plus, as Parker said, this hits their one more stop pit window. And you'll also notice that no crew member has gave any attention to the right rear quarter panel of the two. They're not going to fix that. That's what you call convenient damage, Rick. You just leave that the right way. You just be thankful it went that way. It might work out for Brad Keselowski. They're looking for win number 499 for Penske.
NASCAR Heat 3 is available now on the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. Go to NASCARHeat.com today. You're watching Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And again, penalties on pit road. Take another look at what happened here with the 24 team. This is for the 24 of William Byron. They're going to call it an uncontrolled tire. And all I can figure is that that right front tire that was pushed by the tire changer then left. The rule is it has to be within arm's reach. It's very close to the carrier. It is truly a judgment call, but I'm going to tell you, Rick, if I'm a crew chief, I'm going to spend some time in the trailer before the race at Las Vegas. I have to understand this rule black and white before we enter the playoffs. That's the fifth call in just this race today. Harvick and Boyer leading the field back across the stripe, and Harvick once again with the advantage. Boyer now to the outside will try to fight back. Gets very close to that right rear quarter panel of the four, but the four still surging ahead. And the battle's for second. Boyer will lose ground to Harvick, and Ryan Blaney is on the scene. He looked low off, too, has to back away and follow Boyer in that number three position. Kevin Harvick checks out for that lead. Clint Boyer. Make a chase here with Blaney behind him and then Denny Hamlin hits fourth. Eric Almirola in fifth. And this battle back here about fifth, sixth, seventh is going to get heated up. A lot of different speeds, different strategies, different tires. Look back here, two wide. Max is coming to you, Rick. Yeah, they're single file all the way back to about 10th or 11th. Logano, Kenseth, Kurt Busch all back here fighting for those spots and Kurt Busch leading this crowd as we see the 18 dodge to the inside of Paul Menard trying to take that spot away. He eases to the inside of Menard as they enter turn number one. He just took the 16th position. Lane is left open. Here's the three to the inside of Menard. No race side by side and Brad Keselowski looking to go three wide off turn two. Keselowski's going to get some help from Jimmy Johnson here. Jimmy's going to try to shut him by these guys. Jimmy's going to take a few spots himself down into turn three, three wide. Something's got to give. They make contact. Wow, Austin Dillon, good job backing out of there and saving all those guys a lot of trouble. They're not done yet, though, Junior. That's still too wide. Getting to the four, coming toward me. Nice job in turn three. The battle continues on the front straightaway. Michael McDowell in the 34. Very close call there between McDowell and the three of Austin Dillon. Look at the contact here. McDowell in that 34 trying to take advantage of it. Had Ryan Newman right in front of him. That battle settles down into turn two. Just watching Kurt Busch under attack. Matt Kenseth will slide by in the sixth. Now it's Eric Jones's turn. Jones pulls to the inside of Kurt Busch on the back stretch. Jones trying to side draft. Look at him getting up the racetrack, trying to get to the quarter panel of that 41. He knows that's important to be able to make this pass. He's going to make it down into turn three as Kurt Busch wisely pulls in behind the number 20 of Eric Jones. Okay, you see his brother Kyle working his way up from the from the back where they had the pit. Doing a nice job getting up there. Keselowski on the move with Suarez right now. Tough, tough battling back here. No air on these cars. Really hard to drive the cars in the corner. And Jeff Adam Stevens told Kyle Busch, be very careful coming up through the field. So trying to be aggressive with the car that has led the most laps today at 27 for Kyle Busch. Right now in 15th in some very tough traffic, Bagman. Kyle Busch, you're right, Marty, he is. He's got Chris Busher now. He'll overtake him one by one. Kyle is starting to pick him up and put him down and put him in the rear view mirror. And Brad Keselowski's coming along for the ride as well. Brad's going to get that position pretty easily from Busher. As Busher's going to pull in behind him. Next up for Busher is Jimmy Johnson. He's working his way through the field as well. And remember Bush when he pitted, he came out in 25th. That was two cautions ago. He started this time in 17th, so doing a good job working his way up. Harvick Boyer, Blaney Hamlin, Almarola, the top five. Then it's Larson, Chase Elliott, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Jamie McMurray, and Joey Logano in the top ten. Watching the brothers Bush come into turns one and two. They're fighting for the 13th position. Kurt in the 41 has it. Kyle in the 18 is trying to take it away. Then you put Brad Keselowski in this mix. He's starting to inch closer and closer. Right now he's trailing Kyle by about three car lanes. Down the back straightaway. In front of these guys is a fast car, Matt Kenseth. Matt Kenseth just ran the third fastest lap this lap this time by. And he's going to the inside of Joey Logano down here, turn four. Matt Kenseth has not forgot how to drive a race car. Roush Fenway can give him some race cars that are good enough. He can 
drive it to the front. Kenseth is making up some ground. Let's see who's on the move, brought to you by Chevrolet. Since the restart, the one who has made up the most positions has been the driver of the number two, Brad Keselowski. Keselowski, the man on the move, nine positions he has made up already since the most recent restart. William Byron, Eric Jones also making up some ground. It's that driver, that light blue car that just went out of the bottom of the screen. That's the one I'm looking at, Rick. He's on the same strategy as the 18 of Kyle Busch right there. You just heard Marty say he's led 27 laps today, so you would assume he'd be the first car in whatever strategy he's on. That's not the case. Matt Kenseth is the first car in that strategy. I know he hasn't led laps, but that sixth car is sneaky fast today. And back in front of the grandstands again, Marty. And Rick, there you see it on the left-hand side, the strategy all over the map. Kevin Harvick cannot make it to the end of this stage. Behind him is teammate Clint Boyer lifting early, saving a lot of fuel. They are going to try to make it to the end of the stage, along with Ryan Blaney. But you see Eric Amarola in fourth. He can make it to the end of the stage. So pit strategy all over the map. And Steve, here at Indianapolis, if you lift early, you have your driver do that, you can save a good amount of fuel. You can save a lot of fuel. Two big strategies, lift early and also run part throttle. Get back to wide open, get up on the straightaway, get rolling in the right direction, and then go to part throttle and ride it down these long straightaways. Let's listen in to the radio on the 14. I mean, you keep doing what you're doing. The four's going to have to pit here, probably another eight, nine laps. The car behind you is saving like hell. Two cars behind him can make it to the end. That's great information. That allows the driver to manage it out the window. Don't worry about the guy in front. Manage it out the mirror. You know the 12 saving. Don't worry about him. But listen. The 10 behind him can make it. That's who Clint Boyer needs to pace himself off from with 14 to go in this stage. So they're looking at Kevin Harvick. He came to pit road on lap 42. There have been 86 laps complete. So you do the math there, 44 laps. You had mentioned that the fuel window was around that 44, 45 laps, but there was a lot of caution laps that they were running as well. Marty. And to add to this, Kevin Harvick just came on the radio a moment ago. There you see him in turn four, said, I picked up a vibration here. So they're going to send him around a few more times, see if that vibration gets any better for Kevin Harvick. But he is going to have to come to pit road before the end of the stage. Oh, and I'm worried about a vibration here. Sometimes it's a wheel, but it can be a tire. And at these speeds, it could come apart very quickly as he exits turn two in front of Bagley. Yeah, here he comes into turn two. A vibration at Indianapolis is not something you want. Right now, he just eases it into the bottom of the racetrack, slings it wide up onto the back straightaway. And right now, as you see him inside the car, he's cool, calm, and collected. But I'm sure, Junior, he's holding his breath at the same time. He ran the second fastest lap just that last time by, so he's got great speed, running really comfortably. No issues with him right now to 5070. 5119 to Boyer. Yeah, I think for Kevin Harvick right now, he's obviously heard about the vibration, and, but he has plenty of gap. If he needs to make you just slow down just a little bit, he's got plenty of gap to Boyer. He can slow down to just assess the situation, but he doesn't look like he needs to do it. Still pushing hard. Digging once again is Kevin Harvick as he comes up on the lap traffic now in turn number one, and a very close call there as Timmy Hill in the 66 didn't give him a lot of room as he dove into one. Yeah, forced Harvick down lower than he would have liked to have taken into turn one, but he did make that pass. He pulls away. He's running his own race right now, unchallenged and all by himself as he heads to three. Yep, down the back straightaway. All out front and clear, but in the back, Matt Kenza still driving through this field. He's past Jamie Murray. Closing in now on Joey Logano, or not Joey Logano, but Rick Stenhouse. Made that pass, and now he's looking at has to chase Elliott next. This six car is fast, guys. Yeah, Matt Kenseth is very good at this racetrack. He has a five race streak of top tens. That leads all active drivers, actually tied all active drivers. So Matt Kenseth is very good at Indy, and he's on his game today. And Rick, we've talked a lot about drivers that aren't a winless streak. How about organizations? Roush Fenway brings Matt Kenseth in. That's a tough decision to do what they did. They say, hey, Trevor Bain, we're going to split this ride with you and Matt Kenseth. It has taken time, but it seems like we're starting to see an improvement. Now we have the six as one of the fastest cars in the field, Parker. 
Right, guys, and as you've noted, the last five laps, he's actually been one of the top three fastest cars on the racetrack there for Matt Kenseth. What an incredible run, and for a guy who said when he got in that car, they were maybe a 23rd to 25th place car, and they've seen incremental gains getting in the top 20. He said, by the end of the season, I just hope we can maybe fight for top 10s. He's got more than that, Dave. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. into the top 10. Now, remember, only a win can put the 17 into the playoffs at this point. He said recently his car was very good, and then they told him, keep digging for now as you see Kevin Harvick pitting pit road. The 17 will keep going hard and not saving yet. That'll give the lead to Clint Boyer as Harvick will come to pit road. Had to do this, didn't he, Marty? He did have to come to pit road after that vibration report. And also, clearly, they pitted 10 laps earlier than everybody else. We showed you that. They pitted on lap 42. A little bit too free for the four car, but he has been able to turn out some amazing laps for Kevin Harvick. And when his teammate Clint Boyer goes by, he is completely shut off, saving all the fuel he can to make it to the very end here. Harvick is going to be in a good spot, though, when this stage happens to play a little strategy and gain some track position for fresh Goodyear tires here for Harvick in the Sunoco fuel he needs. So Harvick tops off with just 10 laps to go as we go NASCAR nonstop from Indy. All right, Rick, six laps to go in the second stage. You know what that means? Get to my fantasy lineup. Get to your lineup, make the change. Let me go ahead. If you had the 78 in, he's out. He's going to score a point. Get in your garage, make the change now. And listen, don't forget, this is the last race of the regular season starting next week at Las Vegas. The new fantasy game, the playoff game, 10 weeks out. Go sign up, start a new league. It's going to be a blast. Marty? Clint Boyer doing everything he can, Steve, to make it to the end of this stage. He is literally shutting the car off at the flag stand and coasting through one and two. They need this playoff point to win the stage. They got their first stage win earlier today. Take a listen to the transmission on the radio a moment ago. We're going to pit. we got to pit three to go. With the way we've been saving, it looks like we can make it right to lap 100, but we might run out after that, which would cause us to serve a penalty. You know, or go a lot down. 
What a gamble for the 14 team, Steve. They want this playoff point pretty bad. Is it worth the risk? Well, you have to decide if you can win the race. I mean, if they can't win the race and the playoff point's all that matters, um, I think they still can win the race. So, to be quite honest, I'm pretty thankful I'm up here. There's way less pressure up here, Dave. I get to just talk about these pit calls. <laughs> we'll talk about pit road now for Eric Almirola. On pit road for service, it'll be tires and fuel to get him to the next stop. This will not be the last stop. Couldn't make it to the end of the stage or did strategy here. Rick, I like the gamble. I think the 14 should go with it. I don't have the fuel numbers, but talk about momentum. If they could win this stage, take this playoff point, they're going to be looking good. I like the gamble. They've done their work in the regular season. They've already won a couple races. So right now they're at 43 laps, now 44 laps that they have gone. But remember, some caution laps in there. Yeah, and the concern is Denny Hamlin behind the bag, man. The question is, if you can't hold off Denny Hamlin and save gas, go ahead and pit. There's no reason to do both. And you see the 11 right here. He's finally had enough of Ryan Blaney, forces his way through, and then they go down the backstretch on the bottom right of your screen. You're going to see that he's continuing to close on the leader as they get in front of turn three. Marty. And what's going to make it worse, all these cars behind Clint Boyer are going to come to pit road now. Denny Hamlin among them. Also, Ryan Blaney going to come to pit road. And Boyer now making the decision. They're coming to pit road. Brett Griffin, the spotter, calls him to pit road. So Boyer going to give up that playoff point, come to pit road here along with Denny Hamlin. Now, the reason they're doing this before the end of stage three, that sets them up so that they can then at the end of stage three, stay out or take fuel only. So this puts these teams in a very good position for track position later in the race. Boyer saying his car a little bit too free on that run, but very happy with it. Denny Hamlin, you're riding him on board with him. He said the same thing. Very happy with the car. I don't want any changes. And Ryan Blaney, you saw Denny Hamlin kind of nudge him out of the way. He said his car a little bit too tight. All of these guys making a move now to come to pit road before the end of stage two to set themselves up for stage three. They don't want to make a mistake on pit road like the 10 did. Eric Almirola speeding on pit road. Jeff. Yeah, a big factor in all this, too, was Matt Kenseth. Matt Kenseth was, was running third. He pitted on lap 68. He didn't have to save fuel. He was going to be pushing these guys so hard, they were going to have to run wide open to win the stage. So Matt Kenseth influenced these guys having to pit. And Jeff, actually, Matt came across the radio when he saw those two pit and said, maybe we should have pitted there because now they're going to obviously give up the track position when they have to pit here under caution, even when they win this stage. And I think it's going to be really close if the 18 made it before they clo before they closed pit road because they close it with two laps to go. And it looked as though Kenseth made it to the start finish line before the 18 got to the commitment line. Yeah, Marty. And they're talking about that on the 18 radio right now. But Kyle Busch coming down pit road. They're going to finish servicing the car here for the 18. Did a great job of taking care of it, kind of coming up through the field. Was able to pass a number of cars. But you're going to see a wedge adjustment there on the left side to get the car to handle a little bit earlier. And the ruling coming down now. Yes, the 18 team pitted too soon, guys. You said it, Rick. Can't afford a mistake under green flag stop like that. Well, I don't even. It was, it was just a gutsy call to see if they could beat the leader of pit road. I actually thought the six of Matt Kent who lets Ricky Stenhouse go. That'll put Stenhouse back on the lead lap. I thought the six would come to pit road as well. Perhaps Adam Stevens did as well. But it was, I mean, it was a blink of an eye. From up here, I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell. I have a good vision to start, finish, and pit in. And I couldn't tell who got where first. But you see it at the top of your screen. NASCAR knows. They said the 18 hit the commitment line after Matt Kenseth hit the start, finish line. That closed pit road before the end of the stage. And Matt Kenseth. Now with almost a four second lead over Chase Elliott is going to get the stage win. Matt Kenseth coming in for Roush Fenway Racing to try to improve the overall competition. And I would say that this is a big improvement because Matt Kenseth will win stage two at Indy. Chase Elliott, Eric Jones, Joey Logano, and Kurt Busch rounding out the top five in stage two, all getting points. Suarez, Kozlowski, William Byron, Ryan Newman, and Jimmy Johnson also tacking on some points from that stage. But it's Matt Kenseth who's come back to the Cup Series with Roush Fenway Racing, and he wins stage two.
And getting ready for the final stage from Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Matt Kenseth getting the win in stage two. So Clint Boyer wins stage one. Matt Kenseth wins stage two. And so many different strategies. There are a ton of different strategies you're going to see right here. Matt Kenseth, Chase Elliott, they'll all hang a left and come to pit road. It's all the way down, really, in the 19th position. Clint Boyer, he'll probably stay on the racetrack. He was on pit road at lap 97. So now all these pit crews need to do their work. Drivers, no penalties, driving through too many pit stalls. We've seen a lot of uncontrolled tires, Parker. Right, guys, and Matt was not happy about winning that stage. He said a stage win is cool, but it screwed us in terms of our track position, in terms of the leaders. And Matt Pusha admitted, yes, we should have pitted with two to go. They're going to do four junior tires and Sunoco fuel, and also a piece of tape there on the front, just for you, Junior. Kelly. Eric Jones pits from the third position. They've taken some big swings at this 20 car, first to loosen him up, but now they need him. Uh, now he's a little bit too tight, I should say. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment. Four tires and fuel. The nine of Chase Elliott said he was pretty good, but you saw they made a chassis adjustment there to the left rear. Four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel for the nine. And the race off pit road. Going to be a tight one here. Kenseth and Chase Elliott, and of course Chase Elliott. <laughs> How about that? Gets the nose just in front. Ooh, man, that's close. So Chase Elliott gains a position. Matt Kenseth drops a position. Now, the way the rule works in stage racing is with two laps to go, when the leader of the race goes across the start-finish line with two laps to go, that closes pit road. And so that is why we had mentioned that it was very close for the 18 of Kyle Busch because he was just getting to the entrance of pit road. You see Kyle Busch on the right. On the left is the start-finish line. You'll see the sixth flyby right there, and that's how close it was for Kyle Busch. Yeah, and so basically right now, Kyle Busch, he's committed. He's going to go over the line either way. The only way he can avoid penalty, as you see the light is red, is to not stop in his pit box. But I'm not sure even Kyle Busch, I mean, you're busy. You're trying to get slowed down, Marty. I'm not sure he could see the line or everything that was going on. Yeah, it was so close. They didn't know. Adam Stevens says that was completely my fault. That's the bad news. The good news is that they have won the regular season championship officially for the 18 car. They did relay that news to Kyle. He came down pit road. They actually shut the car off here, and they're working on it. He said the car just didn't have the free roll that it's had the last couple of years when we've been successful here. So they took their time, went through it, made several adjustments to it. Adam Stevens also said we're going to be back in traffic so I'm going to loosen you up quite a bit. So we're going to have as we've continued to say all day just a jumbled up grid. We see we have William Byron currently as the leader. He was last on pit road at lap 77. He has 22 laps on his tires. Well I think Darren Grubb's theory here is I can only pit, I can pit one more time and I can make it. You look at the left side of your screen. Boyer, Hamlin, Harvick, Larson, Blaney, McMurray, Stenhouse Jr. all took advantage of that strategy pitting before the end of the stage. They also only have to pit one more time as well as Chase Elliott, Kenseth, and all the guys that came at 102. So really the whole field is looking at one more pit stop. It's really how fresh are your tires and what track position you have, Marty, now that all of that strategy has unfolded. You know, Steve, all day long we've been wondering, like, what's gotten into Clint Boyer? He always says Indy's not one of his best racetracks. I figured it out. Did you give Boyer some tips before this race of how to run this place, Smoke? <laughs> no, he's uh, – I think he does a little better here than he gives himself credit for, but he's done an awesome job today. Uh, you know, all of our cars are fast. So he's just trying to minimize mistakes right now. That's the only thing that's hurt the 41 and the 10. So uh, the other two guys, uh, you know, Clint and Kevin are doing an awesome job. Just uh, proud of everybody. They We got – four really fast cars here at Indy. You were up here and there was a big talk about whether to go and finish that stage and try and get the playoff point. What side were you on? You came to pit road. I don't know. I had bigger balls than the rest of them did. I, I would have taken the chance, but you know, that's why I also get myself in trouble too. I put myself in those positions sometimes, but uh, you know, Booga did the right thing there. I mean, we, we got a fast race car. We're, we're back leading the race right now, and uh, you know, but we, we could have put ourselves in a really bad spot if he ran out of fuel. So the risk versus reward uh, really didn't make sense, and that's uh, that's what having a great uh, crew chief that knows how to minimize the risk that's, that's the value to him. The boss man smoke up here for uh, Clint Boyer, and I would say Boyer's probably having his best indie race ever. Got to be something Tony said to him. I know it was. I know it is, guys. Well, we always love to hear from Tony Stewart, very candid, but he really loves Indianapolis Motor Speedway. 
It's the world capital of racing, and everybody knows the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and the significance and history of it. Every element of that race has to go perfect for you to win the Brickyard 400. There isn't a celebration like what you have when you win at the Brickyard. That shows you how significant and how much it means to win. It's not like another race. It is not like another race. I, oh. I, I used to no. say this. I was very fortunate to be on teams. I never was able to win it as a crew chief, but I was on Jeff Gordon's teams. and won it multiple times, and everyone has said, oh, well, you know, it's just another race. I said, that's because you haven't won it. And I've been fortunate enough, worked with really great drivers, great teams, and I, that moment, that 36 inches of brick, probably the most valuable real estate in all of auto racing on the front stretch, when you kneel there and look up and down the start-finish line, up and down the front stretch, it starts to sink in the, the people who have done this before you it's truly amazing who knew just a simple yard of bricks could be so valuable the racetrack built back in 1909 and as I mentioned before all the greats have been here and been able to capture wins let's take a look at John Deere three wide gator well, we think about Indianapolis, you think about a narrow racetrack. Well, don't tell these guys. This is three wide down the front stretch. Another look at it. The 21 car forces the issue on the bottom. They try to get it sorted out going down into turn one. 21 all but touches the racetrack here, or the grass. Another three wide contact here between the three and the 48. That was almost three wide gone bad, but they somehow figured it out. Parker. Steve, you noted how William Byron got to the lead here, knowing that they've gotten back on their strategy where they can pit one more time. His team told him, get ready to use that blue reserve switch. You'll give us a lap and a half extra. They are definitely going to need it this run. Getting ready for the restart of the big machine vodka 400 at the Brickyard. They're going to need all the fuel, and he's going to need a great restart. He has to keep that track position. William Byron, Clint Boyer, green flag. Clint Boyer on the outside has the advantage in one, but here comes William Byron in the 24, trying to fight back, but he'll be in second. Then the 11 of Denny Hamlin drops back to third. Front four have pulled away and are starting to check out already. Boyer, Byron, you got Hamlin and Kyle Larson all starting to check out as they race their way up the back stretch. Kevin Harvick with a little trouble now, side on that restart. Look at those guys, three or four wide in the back here. Joe Logano trying to move forward. Well, a lot of the guys, Brad Keselowski, Ryan Newman, stacked up field coming to you, Jeff. Yeah, Joe Logano there on the bottom. He struggled all day, really just hadn't had the speed, made a big change in that car, uh, car early in the race. I think at this point, they had to be pretty happy that they've hung in this well. Strategy-wise, nobody can make it to the end of this race. They don't have enough fuel. They don't have enough fuel in a big move by Matt Kenseth to kind of break free of traffic. We heard he was disappointed they didn't try a more aggressive strategy, where now he's kind of broken free in ninth. Time to stretch the legs there, Bagley. Coming into turns one and two, he's starting to break away and starting to track down the leaders as up front. Here's a challenge for the number two position. Denny Hamlin pulls to the inside off turn two. Denny Hamlin side drafting a little bit, getting a little bit of a nose ahead as they go by. William Byron, William Byron tucks in behind that 11 car, not allowing the 42 of Larson to make the same move, coming through three and four. Yeah, Kyle Larson gonna try to lay back just a little bit in th four, trying to get a big run on corner exit. You see, he's got a run, he's gonna get alongside and come down to the front straight away. 54 to go, time to battle it out for the win at the Brickyard 400. You see Kyle Larson diving there underneath William Byron. A lot of teams have reported oil down in turns one and two, some sort of fuel fluid. Ryan Blaney said he went in there on the restart and absolutely went straight. So we've heard a couple of drivers talk about that. We'll see if that gets a caution here, Bags. So far, green and clean off turn number two. Leaders hit the back straight away. We're looking three wide yet again. Chase Elliott, Jamie McMurray, and others start to stack it up there. That all could have been the issue for Harvick on that restart. He's starting to gain those positions back at the fifth place here. Looking at McMurray, who's having a solid day here in sixth. Coming to you, Jeff. Yeah, Jamie's run very well. Heard those reports, and Carl said that he would not be back in the start next year. And Jamie Murray with something to prove, you see. There again, Matt Kenseth on the move. Two Roush Fenway racing drivers fighting for position, but it's Kenseth who easily gets by Ricky Stenhouse Jr., and he'll take the ninth position away. He will slide underneath Stenhouse. He'll take that spot, and now he's got a lot more work to do. He's got William Byron directly ahead of him. 
And as you're looking on board with Ricky Stenhouse Jr., he's starting to watch Matt Kenseth slowly start to drive away. And Stenhouse is got elbows up there trying to keep that car out of control off the corner. Matt Kenseth tracking down William Byron. William struggling up there with that car after starting on the front row. Parker Klingman has said they added more tape to that six car. It's showing right now as he's driving up on that 24. And you know inside of that car, Matt Kenseth is happy. He's smiling. It's been a struggle. Came back trying to help get this team right in, but it has not gone showing right now that they have made huge improvements making a move on William Byron. Remind you, Matt Kenseth wins in this race. It doesn't affect the playoffs because Matt Kenseth not a full time driver not in the top 30 in points. But for Matt Kenseth to win huge for Roush Fenway racing. Well, I was going to say it might not affect the playoffs, but it is going to single handedly affect an organization with the story of the 78 closing. You have to ask all these organizations. How strong are they? Think about Rush Fountain, what it would mean to go back to victory lane for the team, for the businesses, for the sponsors. It would be gigantic in the sport. Down into turn three. He has that position on Byron, and now Stenhouse tries to take it as well. Stenhouse in the Rouse Ford as well, having a great run. Yeah, you mentioned Stenhouse. He was over here the other night. We showed the dirt track. He ran over, over on the dirt track the other night. So this is not the first race of the weekend for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. 11th place finish in that midget race that was on Thursday nights. Clint Boyer out front, taking that forward around this two and a half mile historic racetrack as we go NASCAR nonstop. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Monster Energy, Unleash the Beast, and by Golden Corral, your choice rules. And after the checkered flag here in Indianapolis, stay tuned for NASCAR America Post Race Show presented by Honda Power Sports. 
Rick, I don't need to remind you, you stood up here next to me last year of what the last 46 laps of last year's race looked like. So while it seems pretty straightforward here and we talk about strategies and which cars are good, absolute chaos last year. It was caution on top of caution and somehow Casey Kane came through the smoke and was victorious. We still have no idea what could be happening here as Harvick kind of comes down the racetrack. I'm maybe just trying to get a little clean air to the engine. Sometimes just cool the motor a little bit. As a crew chief, do you split this in half? Do you take this last stage, 30 laps, try to split in half, or do you go as far as you can and then have the freshest tires and fuel for the, say, last 15, 20 laps of this race? Well, it's going to be a little game of liar's poker. Who's going to talk on the radio first? Who's going to show their hand first? Personally, if I'm Clint Boyer, I don't blink first. I make somebody behind me make a decision. But if I am Blaney Harvick, how about McMurray in six? It's a must win for McMurray. I think as soon as I'm in my window, I come to pit road, I force everybody else's hand. And as the field continues to work their way around the track, time for today's Toyota driver update. See the 19 of Daniel Suarez, his name came up the second that the 78 team of Furniture Row Racing mentioned that they were closing the doors because we knew that there was going to have to be a spot for last year's champion, Martin Truex Jr. and Cole Pern to move into. So the first name that came up was Daniel Suarez. Daniel's a very good race car driver, young, you know, came into this series probably a year earlier than people thought he would. Carl Edwards walked out, gave him a spot, and now he's fighting for his existence in this series, but he's a challenging race car driver. He just needs a little more time. Dave. And Rick, his crew chief's name came up this weekend because Scott Graves and the team failed technical inspection four times. Daniel had to start this race in the rear. His car chief was ejected, and uh, so, Actually, I think it was three times. I didn't mean to say four times. But anyway, they had to start at the rear of the field. Has had a fairly decent day. One thing to note, on the last green flag run, they had 28 green flag laps and had a little bit of courting on the right front. So Daniel's been a little bit more delicate with that car this run. Can you be delicate and run 13th? Because <laughs> well, that no, right but, now but is where Suarez is. You just asked the question of how you break up the final run. Well, there's your answer if you're the 19. You know how far you want to right front tire. Don't pit and force yourself to go 42 laps. They may force to be run long to make sure they can make it on the last right front tire. That's Listen, as a crew chief, you got to be light on your feet. And here we go. Matt Kenseth continues to inch in on Chase Elliott. What a great run for him this afternoon. I don't think his name was on the tips of anyone's tongues as a favorite to win today, but at the right time with 43 to go, Junior, that car's starting to come to life and he's a factor in this thing. They certainly keep seeming to make it better every time they come down Pier Road. And he's closing in on Chase Elliott to try to take that position in seventh. And James Murray, all these guys right there together, if he can get them quickly, move through into the top five. Yeah, Matt ran these guys down. He was pretty far behind them, was able to run them down, but. It's going to be difficult to make this fast. We talked about it all day long, how in these corners you lose down for us. It makes it very difficult, even if you have a little faster car. Ends up within six and a half seconds of race leader Clint Boyer. Denny Hamlin, Kyle Larson, Ryan Blaney, and Kevin Harvick are the top five. You see Chase Elliott. He's running seventh. McMurray in sixth. Mentioned Boyer. Boyer now has led the most laps. As we take a look at today's lap leaders brought to you by Honda Power Sports. 28 laps led by Clint Boyer, Kyle Busch at 27, Harvick 22, Denny Hamlin 21. So four different drivers, over 90 laps led by those four drivers. Marty. So the big debate now, when does the final window open for that last stop? Mike Vigaravich having a conversation a moment ago with the spotter, Brett Griffin. Listen. The window is going to open for making it to the end of the race, so just keep me posted on who pits. I'm not going to be the first car to pit. And that window opens in one more lap. And, Steve, as you mentioned, you don't want to be the first one to pit, especially if you're the leader, Clint Boyer. Kyle Busch also coming down pit road right now. He said the right rear of that tire, or that, and the car is going down. So Kyle Busch coming down pit road with a right rear that is going down. And this would be on the very edge of Kyle Busch being able to make it all the way. If it cycles out, they should be fine because everybody should be pitting in the next five to ten laps. We mentioned this, the 14, he doesn't want to be first. And the reason he's asking his spotter, just this place is so big. When you sit down on pit road, you can't really see everything. It's easy to get kind of tunnel vision, forget what's going on. So, hey, that's 
You're my teammate up there. Don't leave me hanging. I definitely don't want to be the eighth or tenth guy. He was running 16th. And again, Kyle Busch came to Pit Road when Pit Road was closed at the end of stage two. See smoke coming out of the back for Chris Busher. Yeah, I saw him coming into turn three with a flat left rear tire. Great save to keep that car out of the fence and out of trouble. We're going to stay green. Stays green means Clint Boyer continues to set the pace around this racetrack. Parker. And guys, William Byron just came on the radio, said he might have had a tire issue on the right front. He's down on pit road. Remember, he hadn't pitted in lap 77. They were stretching the fuel as far as they could to get in the window to do this on one more stop. It's before Goodyear tires Sunoco fuel for the rookie. Problem with that strategy, he will more than likely lose a lap and be a lap down. As we go NASCAR nonstop, Boyer still in front at Indy. Sunday Night Football has NFC East rivals colliding. Eli Manning and the Giants visit Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. That coverage begins with Football Night in America at 7 p.m. Eastern. Kickoff now at 8.20 p.m. Sunday only on NBC. Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Indianapolis is telecast presented by Golden Corral out front. The 14 of Clint Boyer now. 35 laps he has led. He has a 1.1 second lead over Denny Hamlin. Clint Boyer comes into turn two. Again, he'll dial up the bottom lane of the racetrack. He's been flawless all afternoon long. That car is handling perfectly. However, he doesn't have time to tarry because Denny Hamlin is starting to close in from the back door. Definitely, these two guys have had the two most outstanding cars all day long. Clint Boyer showed it earlier today. Clint, as well as Denny Hamlin, great speed by both these guys as they stretched their lead out over Kyle Larson. Yeah, if I'm Clint Boyer right now, I can't get out of my head. Bristol had a chance to win. Bristol late in the race, leading. Didn't get a great restart. 
teammate ends up winning the race. Well, now with 35 to go, leading the Brickyard 400, I gotta find a way to make this happen. Well, you see at the top of the screen, Clint Bohr is leading. Well, Denny Hamlin jumps to 14, comes to pit road a lap early. Marty tries to get those fresh tires, get an advantage on Clint Boyer. Mike Wheeler making the call here, and really there are only three cars that can kind of play this strategy and not go a lap down. Denny Hamlin was one of those three cars, only a second behind Clint Boyer. Mike Wheeler making the call here to bring in the pit road a little bit earlier than the 14, seeing if they can maybe jump him a little bit. Hamlin with a clean execution thus far. Very happy with the race car. No changes on this final stop, Dave. Marty, Jamie McMurray's team got his car right about halfway through the race, and they've just been working on racing lines since then. Here he'll take on four Goodyear tires and a full load of Sunoco fuel to try to get the 2010 winner back to the front. I think this is a missed opportunity by the 14. I understand how Danny Hamlin got to pit road first because he was in second, so you don't know what he's going to do. But the 14 stays on the racetrack. It's going to be interesting to see if this cycles out, how much time he's going to give up to the new tires as Kyle Larson apparently smokes all the tires yeah. on the pit road. Kelly. Yeah, and their pit stops have kind of been the Achilles heel for the 42 of Kyle Larson. They've had a couple of slow ones today. It's something Chad Johnston told me that they need to find more consistency with. The last time they asked Kyle how his car was doing, he said it was fine. But you see they're going to make a chassis adjustment there as well as giving him four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel, Marty. Clint Boyer, the leader, coming down pit road. Also, Kevin Harvick, his teammate, also coming down pit road. You see Harvick here in this pit stall. A little bit of problems with the car running hot. Not anything they were overly worried about for Kevin Harvick and his race team, who at times have been the fastest car here at Indianapolis, but running fifth when he came to pit road this time. Clint Boyer now coming down pit road. Boyer said it starts off too free, and then it gets really good. But he wanted the air pressures put back like they were on the last run for Clint Boyer. So obviously the car very good for Boyer. And he said there's a lot of pressure when you bring the number 14 to Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Obviously the history with A.J. Foyt, Tony Stewart as well. Can Clint Boyer close the deal today? Small air pressure adjustment, seeing if they can keep him in the lead here and win at the Brickyard. The race right now is Clint Boyer getting off of pit road in front of the 11 because that would be that advantage you talked about. That's right. So first it looks like a clean stop. So here comes Clint Boyer, bottom right of your screen. Denny Hamlin on the front stretch. Clint Boyer will have to use the access road through turn one, through turn two. It's not doesn't have quite as much grip. Let's see. Denny Hamlin, the 11, is going to easily overtake Clint Boyer right here in turn two. Remember that extra lap that the 14 ran? What's going to cost them what could be the lead? We still have a lot of cars to pit, but in my mind, that's the lead for the Brickyard 400. Unbelievable turn of events. You said it, Steve. I think the 14 obviously lost a little bit of time staying out a little longer, staying out that extra lap, but it also appears that everything the 11 did on pit road as far as getting on and off pit road was much, much better. Yeah, Clay Boyer's got to put that behind him, though. He's got to focus on lap time, trying to run that 11 car down. You know, not a good call to, to wait that long to pit, Marty. Hey, Jeff, Ryan Blaney missed his stall here on pit road. He literally slid by it. There was another car on pit road when it all went down. He actually was in his teammate Joey Logano's stall. You see him up front there and backed up from there, and now the air hose kind of gets caught on the left front. This team made a nice rally after contact on pit road with their teammate Brad Keselowski, but this is going to be a costly stop for the 12 team. Take another look at what happened on pit road for the 12. Coming into a oh. look at him all locked up. And that's a missing your pit sign situation there as the 22 of Joey Logano coming off of pit road and blending back on the back stretch as he chases after the 41. Parker. And guys, it was disaster for Matt Kenneth on pit road. He pitted out of fifth place, but when he came in, it was all good on the right side, but the car actually fell off the jack on the left side. So you see the team running around here. They're going to run around the left side. You're going to see them try to jack it up, and it's going to fall off. And this ensued and kept them a long time in the pits. He's now a lap down from being inside the top five. Horrible for such a good run that they were having inside that sixth car. We heard Tony Stewart say earlier, you can't make mistakes. You have to have a perfect race if you want to win the Brickyard 400. Dave. 
17 car of uh, Ricky Stenhouse had a little bit of a loose condition in this race car earlier. That's what they'll try to adjust out of it here with four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel. Stenhouse running, remember, John Deere colors last week in a retro scheme. This weekend, a brand new scheme for John Deere, joining Roush Fenway Racing for these two races. Two crown jewels in a row. And while that stop continues, Kurt Busch out front. Kurt stopped at lap 102 was the last time he was on pit road. Everyone from first to fifth will still have to pit. Denny Hamlin came on lap 126, and Clint Boyer was on pit road on lap 128. You see Denny Hamlin has about a 20 or 25 car length lead over Clint Boyer. You mentioned the five have to pit, but that strategy is if you get a yellow, you want the freshest tires. Denny Hamlin knows this is for the Brickyard 400, trying to get by lap traffic. Mike, trying to stay in front of that 14. Lots of work to do for Denny Hamlin. To your point, Stevie, get around the lap traffic and don't let Clint Boyer catch you. That's going to be the battle to watch. Right now, Hamlin's in control of that battle. Junior with a lot of real estate between himself and the 14. Boyer's been faster over the last few laps, but slowly chipping away at that distance between him and Denny Hamlin. But I just don't know if he'll have enough to get by him. It's going to be tough. Hamlin's car performing awesome all day long. Yeah, Boyer has been a little bit faster. He's gotten hung up a little bit with lap traffic. That has cost him on that lap. And that's going to be a huge role, which one of these guys can get through lap traffic. But Clint Boyer seems to have a little bit faster race car. And the gap between the two, about a second. As we take a look at today's Ram trucks proven to last. Well, pit mistakes, we've seen many. We're not sure if they're done pitting. If we get yellows, they may come to pit road again. Think about the restarts. They have been crazy. The yellows will have that. And then very simply, the pressure. We hear the names that have won here. The pressure of a crown jewel race. Danny Hamlin, Clint Boyer both want to win a brickyard. Will the pressure of the event change what they do behind the wheel? Let's listen in to actually the winner of a Daytona 500, Denny Hamlin. So we don't know how he'll handle the pressure, but this is what they said on the radio. I can't correct the phone. Got to drive so straight. Marty. And they don't know what that issue is in the 11 car. It could be a power steering issue for Denny Hamlin. He's saying he's just having to turn the wheel a lot harder all of a sudden to get everything to work. That's funny he said that because that's the same thing we heard from his teammate earlier in the race from Kyle Busch. Maybe something within the Gibbs organization and the power steering pumps or you never know. But that seemed to hurt Kyle Busch the rest of the race as he's still motoring on. So maybe it's not a big, big race ending or, or an issue that would cost Denny the win. Down the back stretch they go and headed back toward you, Junior. So Kurt Busch out front still has to stop. Brad Kozlowski, Ryan Newman, Jimmy Johnson all have to make a stop. Denny Hamlin can make it all the way to the end. We go NASCAR nonstop.
And Clint Boyer is running Denny Hamlin down, got into some lap traffic, but Clint Boyer has a faster car. The question is, can he get by when he catches him? Denny Hamlin trying to run perfect laps, but he has to deal with lap traffic now. So when he comes up on lap traffic, it depends on who gets by the quickest. Clint Boyer's been able to take advantage of that, but does he have a good enough car to catch the 11 on an open racetrack? This is the battle for fourth right now. Once everyone cycles through, this will be the battle for the win of the Brickyard 400. Denny Hamlin, Clint Boyer, separated by six car lengths off turn two. Denny Hamlin with a strong race car today. I really don't know if it, Boyer's quick enough to stay there. But neither one of them seem to be able to work lap traffic better than the other. I don't know if Boyer's going to be able to close in enough to give, give the arrow issue with the 11 car. Yeah, I think Clint Boyer has a faster car, but that's the key right there. How do you overcome the arrow, arrow issue? And I believe that Clint Boyer's just going to have to tie the right with lap traffic, try to catch Denny Hamlin in a bad spot. Well, you heard Mike Bagley say the leaders have to pit. Well, Brad Kozlowski, Ryan Newman, Jimmy Johnson, they're leading, but they pit at last at lap 102. You see right there Denny Hamlin and Clint Boyer, 126 and 128. That's actually how Denny Hamlin got the lead coming two laps earlier. Boyer starting to shut it down now, slowly but surely, a car length at a time. Boyer, at least here at the south end of the racetrack, is starting to cut in to that advantage that Denny has. Last lap, they ran pretty much equal times. 50-39 to Hamlin, 50-40 to Boyer. Boyer closes on this straightaway, but then as they go through the turns, Denny's car really getting through the corner here in turn three. Yeah, Boyer's getting a little bit of a draft down these long straightaways, helping him on the straightaway. They got a little bit of lap traffic that they're approaching. I don't think this will be an issue, but you never know. Denny Hamlin looking for his second crown jewel. He's won the Daytona 500, looking for a Brickyard 400 win. Denny Hamlin now just 20 laps away from the checkered flag here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The question is, does he have enough to make it to the end as far as the intestinal fortitude that some of this lap traffic will cause one to dig deep for? Right now, he is in command of this battle, and it looks like now that Hamlin's starting to pull away a tag. Flat traffic in front of both these guys. They close in into turn three here. See how they'll be able to get around the set. The 23 car goes high again. Danny Hamlin in the bottom. He'll be able to exit turn three, no problem. But this is going to slow up the 14 just a little bit as he has an inner shallow in the four. Yeah, that actually hurt Clint Boyer more than it hurt Denny Hamlin for sure. And just a lap before the 31 car, Ryan Newman, he pitted from second place. 31 career wins behind the wheel of the 11. 10 career wins behind the wheel of the 14. The pressure, a crown jewel. Who can put the last 19 laps together? Slowly but surely, we're getting to the end of this one here this afternoon at Indianapolis. The question is, can Denny Hamlin hang on to pick up this crown jewel? That FedEx Toyota, solid now off turn two and onto the back stretch. As the laps wind down, it gets harder and harder for Clint Boyer to be able to close this gap. The 11 car seems to be able to stretch it over the last few corners. As you see the gap right there, it's a little bit larger. Denny Hamlin possibly driving to his first Brickyard 400 win. It's a long way to go, Junior. Still 19 to go. We've seen both of these drivers late in races have a chance to win and not be able to get it done. Clint Boyer with two wins this year. Denny Hamlin with none so far. Yeah, very hungry for Denny Hamlin. 36 race winless streak. He would like to end today. A Monday win. He wouldn't care what day you win at the Brickyard. Any day Denny Hamlin wins is the perfect day for him. Just ask if we could race on Wednesday morning. He wouldn't care. He's trying to hang on right now. So far, so good for Denny. He comes through turn number two, solid as a rock on the bottom of the racetrack. Man, it's interesting. One lap, Denny puts together the corners. The next lap, Clint Boyer puts together a heck of a lap. He's closed in just a little bit here. Coming into turn three, lap traffic ahead again. The 34 car, will that be an issue over, over at you, Jeff? Yeah, I'm with you. It's really interesting. Boyer, that lap, he really beat Dan Denny Hamlin by a ton. It's been back and forth. Does Denny Hamlin make a mistake, or is Clint Boyer's car coming on strong? Marty. Hey, guys, Jeff, you know this. Race teams bring new stuff to the racetrack every week. Denny Hamlin and his team with something new this weekend. And you see the caution for Debris there on the front stretch, guys. Yeah, right almost in front of the flag stand. There is the Debris on the racetrack. And so the caution comes out. I believe one of your keys was restarts, crazy restarts. And we're going to see another one. But it starts with pit stops. First, the crew chief has to make a decision. How much do tires matter? I don't believe you could pit from the front row of the Brickyard 400. We have seen track position matter so much, but someone's gonna pit, and where along the line will it be? Will it be fourth, will it be 
SpaceX as we take a look. You see the debris fly onto the racetrack right there. A big piece of sheet metal is going to have to be picked up. So who pits? Where do they pit from? What position? And then after all that, you mentioned it, Rick, through the gears. A week ago, it was Brad Keselowski's team who had a great stop and was able to get his car out in front. Restart so important. Once again, will it come down to a race team making a flawless stop, getting their driver out on to the racetrack first? Well, you mentioned that heartbreak. Well, it was at the expense of Kyle Larson. He led 284 laps to end it up finished third. Well, who's running third currently? Kyle Larson. Can he say, you haven't seen me all day, but guess what? I'm going to sneak up. You took my crown jewel. I'm going to take the ring off your finger. I'm going to try to win the Brickyard. Denny Hamlin, Clint Boyer, Kyle Larson, Jamie McMurray, Brad Keselowski, the top five. Hey, man, how about Jamie McMurray? No wins this year. You're talking about a guy that has nothing to lose and everything to gain. Running in fourth right now, Steve. I'm gonna, if I'm his crew chief, I'm gonna do whatever I can to give him a shot to win this race. If he were to win this race, he's in the playoffs. And that would butt Alex Bowman out. And you have to believe Jamie would follow that by doing whatever he had. The news broke. What did Chip Ganassi say? Jamie McMurray will not be back full time in the one car next year. He can run the 500 for us if he wants to, but that's it. That's his only plans. We don't know what the future holds for him. I don't know if Jamie knows what the future holds for him. But I can assure you, whatever that future is, it would be much, much sweeter if he got to run the rest of 2018 in the playoffs. Along with Jamie Murray, I think you got to look back and think Daniel Suarez in ninth position. This is an opportunity for those guys to throw that Hail Mary we've been talking about all week long. Heck, we've been talking about it for a month leading up to this race, that teams will be in position to do something incredibly extraordinary with their pit stop strategy. Steve, is this the moment where one of those guys makes that type of move? Well, I think it's going to be split, right? I mean, the question is, Will McMurray start fourth? What do the leaders do? Do they pit? It's going to happen right in front of you, Burton, over there in turn four. I'm excited to watch it. I'll tell you what, Jamie McMurray, we've seen him win big races. He's won this race before. So Jamie McMurray, I can promise you, you give him a shot, he is going to match the gas and do whatever it takes to try to get this win. I really think I have to be on the front row. If I can't start in the front row, I'm thinking tires. I think the 11 stays out, the 14 stays out. But I believe the 42 is going to drag the rest with him. This is what it looks like. Oh, and some guys turned back right, but only a few. McMurray turned back off of pit road to stay out and get that track position. Quite a few cars stayed on the track to stay on the lead lap. And Rick, it sounds like the 42 team was waiting to see what those leaders ahead of him would do. Kyle Larson pitting from the third position. He said he was tight to start, but then freed up a little bit. And Chad Johnson making the call for four Goodyear tires, Marty. Kyle Busch has worked his way back up into the top 10. He and Ryan Blaney and Joey Logano all taking advantage here with some fresh tires. We'll see if they can get a very good restart. Going to be four for Kyle Busch coming down pit road. Car was a little bit too free on that run. Great stop for the 18 team. With 42 and 9 will stay in front of them as that race off pit road won by Kyle Larson. Rick, so many cars stayed on the racetrack. It's going to take a lap for me to figure out who's where. We need timing and scoring to refresh because you mentioned it. Some took the left to come to pit road. Some went back on the racetrack. I think Jamie McMurray saw he was going to line up on the inside. Right? He saw the 42 pit, so he said, well, this puts me on the inside. If I can clear whoever's on the outside, you know, if he could somehow clear him off turn two, you never know. Remember, he can win at this racetrack. He's done it before. Did it back in 2010. It was a big year for Chip Ganassi Racing. He had won the Daytona 500 earlier, wins the Brickyard 400. Chip Ganassi, five Indy 500 wins as well. So Jamie McMurray, whose future in the Monster Energy Cup Series is up in the air now after the announcement earlier that he will not be full-time in 2019 with Chip Ganassi Racing and that one car. I go back to what Tony Stewart said. You mentioned it. Everything has to go perfect. And there's just something about this race. It just never is smooth. It's never easy. 15 to go. It looks like it's going to be a battle between two drivers. A piece of debris comes on the front stretch. The caution has to be thrown. Then it's the decision to pit. Then the pit crews have to perform. And now it's going to be about restarts. We don't know. One, two, three. We have no idea how many restarts we're going to get. At a place, guys. Jeff, Jr., this place is just crazy for restarts through one and two. Oh, it is nuts, and I think you're right. I think Jamie McMurray, I think part of his strategy was 
He saw one person pit in front of him. That means immediately he picks up one spot, starts on the inside. I, I think it was a good call. This gives him his best shot to win, but the determination of whether you're gonna win or not could happen at the launch. You gotta launch well, you gotta get through turn one well, and then of course through turn two. And we've seen how crazy they get. Think about last year's race, wreck after wreck after wreck. It's gonna get wild here in a few laps. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that this only works if he's willing to do whatever it takes. And that's, that's you know, that's have the most incredible, the, probably the restart of his life here as he bears down on this on this field going into turn one. He's got to be in position to to be battling for the lead. Like Steve said, you want to be on that front row. That's where that's where we think it'll be decided between those two guys. But somehow Jamie has to put himself in that position and take take those two front front spots. Dave. Matt McCall getting some final conversation with the crew and with Jamie, making sure he's not being communicated with. Go ahead. I don't want you to miss anything right now because you stayed out for track position over those tires. How was that decision made? Yeah, I mean, obviously we need track position. You know, I, mean, I feel like our car has been okay. We got off on the balance to start the race a little bit. Jamie's done a good job uh, maintaining here. And I mean, obviously, uh, I mean, every laps are left 14 or 15. I don't know what it is right now, but uh, we'll see how it pans out. Jamie, good here. We, I was going to say, we talked this morning, and you know he's good here, even without practice on most weekends, right? Correct. That's, uh, that's sort of our forte. I don't know if that's a good thing, but it happened more often than not. <laughs> Happened just last week. Two times in practice, Marty. They didn't. They lost an engine, and he still only had 12 laps of practice. Finished ninth at Darlington, hoping for a better day today. Well, Dave, Mike Wheeler, and Denny Hamlin have won the Daytona 500, the Southern 500, trying for their third crown jewel now with the Brickyard 400. And uh, what worries you about this restart with 13 to go? Uh, getting through the gears and getting through turn one. Uh, if we can do that, we uh, had a good shot. Obviously, got control of the race, so that was big. Uh, can't think the guys at the shop enough in the A team. Uh, they worked their butts off the last couple of weeks getting this thing ready. Uh, getting ready for the chase, and uh, we've done put ourselves in position. We've heard some power steering issues with the 18. We've heard Denny say that it's kind of tough to steer as well. Any concern there for this last few laps? Uh, only concern is on him. Uh, hopefully, he can hang on to it. Nothing in fix right now, so you got to do the best you can. There you go. It's going to be fun, Rick, to watch this restart. What might be the final restart to decide the Brickyard 400? There have been a lot of gambling moves that have taken place, and we're not even in Vegas yet. That comes next week when the playoffs kickoff in Las Vegas for the South Point 400. That race begins at 3 p.m. Eastern on NBCSN. Well, you mentioned playoffs. Let's take a look at the playoffs. What's going to happen in the playoffs? 16 drivers are going to head into round one. Las Vegas, short track at Richmond, a road course at Charlotte. Then we're going to go down to 12 drivers for Dover, Talladega, and Kansas, down to eight for the short track at Martinsville, Texas, and Phoenix, and then down to the championship for on to Miami. Well, we talked about should they pit, should they stay out? I love the call of Jamie McMurray because look where fresh tires line up. The first guy on fresh tires is all the way back in 11th. You see at lap 145, that's where that car pitted. I like Brad Kozlowski. He was the last guy on pit road under green in seventh. So if you came to pit road, you're outside the top 10. We're 13 to go. You just have to ask yourself, Rick, is that too far back to win? <laughs> well, I'm going to send it to the driver, Jeff Burton. Right now, I'm thinking about this restart. If I'm if I'm Clint Boyer, if I'm Denny Hamlin, I have a mission. I've got to get the guy behind me pushing me. I've got to give him a signal, give him the signal to go, wait just a minute, let them get their front bumper to my rear bumper, and then accelerate to try to use that to get me in front and to pull the lead. I worry if he gives him that signal to the one car, the one car is going to take advantage of that and go three wide down in the bottom of turn one. And that could just be terrible for everybody except for Jamie Murray, obviously. We've seen Clint Boyer restart on the outside several times today. He's taken the lead many times doing that. I think I'm, got a, I'm a Clint Boyer man. I'm betting on him to take advantage of this restart and take it to Denny Hamlin and be leading off of turn two. Could this be the final restart? There'll be 12 laps to go on the inside. It's Denny Hamlin. FedEx tweeted earlier today, we deliver possibilities. Well, it's possible. The Brickyard 400 could be won by Denny Hamlin. Back up through the gears they go. Clint Boyer tucks in behind him. He's running second just behind him. Jamie McMurray trying to make the move now for second. Here comes McMurray. He gets into Boyer. Boyer will hang on to the car. Holy cow. What a move by Boyer. A handful coming out of turn number one. He'll hang on to second. McMurray backs away, lets him correct the car in the short shoot. Even with that going on, Denny Hamlin has a tremendous lead. What a jump on that restart. Huge jump going on that restart down into turn one. Had everybody asleep. Clint Boyer fighting for that second spot. Look at Jamie Murray slips up a little bit as he's having a battle right now with Eric Jones. 
Kevin Murray had his shot right there. He cut, he cut Boyer some slack, in my opinion. He could have stayed in the rear bumper for Boyer and spun him around, chose not to do it. Now a big lead for Denny Hamlin coming up on 11 laps to go from Indy. Boyer running second, McMurray, and Eric Jones up into the fourth position. Kevin Harvick drops back to fifth. Jamie McMurray's just trying to hang on to third. He has fallen into the clutches of Eric Jones, while Kevin Harvick now sees Brad Keselowski punch a hole to his inside. Keselowski will drop down low. He will pick up position number five off turn two. There's Brad Keselowski coming into turn three down the back straightaway. Denny Hamlin still with a huge lead. Clint Boyer in second place. Now with a huge lead over Jamie Murray. No lap traffic for these guys. Clear sailing for the leader. Yeah, Clint Boyer, I still believe Clint Boyer is a little bit quicker. He was two tenths of a second quicker on that last lap than Denny Hamlin was. Clint Boyer still has time, but he's going to do everything perfectly if he's going to get to him. Well, this all started on the restart. You guys mentioned it, perhaps the restart of the day, maybe the restart of the life of the 11. He gets out there, and then Boyer trying to protect Jamie McMurray. He's in a must win. He hits him at the bumper once, and like you said, Jeff, kind of cut him a little slack, let him back in line. Now the 14 has to put laps together, try to catch Denny Hamlin, but don't sleep on the fourth place guy, Brad Keselowski. He has about 15 lap fresher tires, Rick. One more restart, and he's going to be right in position. Yeah, Denny Hamlin, he's safe, man. This car is turning great laps. Boyer's a little quicker, but only a couple thousand. That's not going to be enough as they come to nine to go. I think if Denny puts all the corners together, Clint's not going to get close enough to make a pass. It will be difficult. It's so hard. We just keep talking about it this racetrack specifically, aerodynamically, Clint Boyer at disadvantage. I think Clint's got a faster car, but it's going to be hard for him to make it work. Top two have separated themselves. Now the gap as they cross the finish line, it was eight tenths of a second Hamlin to Boyer can he continue to close the gap with these nine laps to go in this race we've seen this before in this race this afternoon Clint Boyer trying to catch Denny Hamlin he got to a certain point and then he had to back away trouble for Austin Dillon turn one Dillon is up against the outside wall makes contact flat right oh, side tires as Austin's trying to bring that car down Get to the, the bottom of the racetrack. He right is clear. He pulls it to the bottom off turn two. A lot of damage though as he pancakes the right side of that car. And will this bring out a caution? That's the big question. And if it does, Brad Kazlowski on those fresher tires is looking wonderful. He has passed Jamie McMurray. That's strategy. He knew he couldn't win at pitting early, so what do they do? They pit late. They run to the end of their window. Here he is in the third position, the freshest tires. Austin Dillon looks like he's going to be able to get to the access road, but here's what happened. Contact with the 22. Joey Logano as he slid up the racetrack, and then two laps later, up into the wall for the three of Austin Dillon. But we stay green under eight laps to go now for Denny Hamlin, Clint Boyer, and Brad Keselowski. Keselowski continuing to click off great lap times. Boyer the last time by was the fastest on the racetrack. Clint's got the best car. I just don't know he has enough time. I'm with you, Steve. That two-car Keselowski, they were really wanting a caution right there. You give him a caution with those two tires, he's going to be hard to beat. I'm thinking he's going to catch the four team, and even without That's a caution. That's a crash. Crash into short shoot of turn three and four. Big crash there. There's the caution. Caution comes out. Landon Castle involved. Heavy damage on the double zero of Landon Castle. Saw he was running 28th. Also, that's the 96 of Jeffrey Earnhardt. I saw this accident happen right in front of me. Jeffrey Earnhardt on the inside of Landon Castle gets loose in the middle of turn three, corrects the car up into Landon Castle. Both guys into the outside wall hard. And a ton of damage to the right front. Actually, now flames underneath the hood of the double zero of Landon Castle. Jeffrey Earnhardt about to climb out of the 96. And it now becomes a shootout. Denny Hamlin and Clint Boyer sitting ducks. Well, that last lap, Rick, the two of Brad Kozlowski was seven tenths of a second faster than the leaders. Will this 
caution, let the leaders cool their tires. Here's a replay of the crash. Jeffrey Earnhardt. And you see Jeffrey get loose. It's just side by side through the corner is tough here, and it takes the side force off of the inside car. And if you're if you're in that car, you have to be ready and know that and try to anticipate it. Hard to do though. And what a huge impact for both of those cars. You see the double zero landing castle kind of got squeezed into the wall and both of those guys hit really hard. We've already seen Jeffrey Earnhardt climb out of the 96. Look at this right here. It just squeezes castle. That is a major impact for both drivers. And they're going to clean up that accident that took place in that short shoot between three and four. Both drivers will be headed to the infield care center and we'll be right back. And now, just under five laps remaining. Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Indianapolis. Telecast presented by Golden Corral. Up front, Denny Hamlin, Clint Boyer will make up row one. Still the decision to be made. Which line will Denny Hamlin choose? He has the option of the inside or the outside. Brad Keselowski, though, a lot fresher tires for Brad Keselowski, who's running third. Jamie McMurray, fourth. Eric Jones in fifth mentioned could it be a new winner here at the Brickyard 400 okay well you mentioned the players Hamlin Boyer Kozlowski how do we get here what was the strategies and the choice as well Danny Hamlin he was the first guy to make a call he was running behind Clint Boyer you see Clint Boyer pass pit road Danny Hamlin he hangs a left under green flag comes to the service of the number 11 FedEx crew they work flawlessly a beautiful pit stop no issue two laps later Clint Boyer, number 14, also does a nice job, comes to pit road. The pit stop looks clean, no issue, but those two extra laps cost the 14. You see right here, the 11 takes the lead. The story, though, wasn't just these two race cars. Brad Kozlowski, he waits 15 laps before he comes to pit road. 15 lap pressure tires, we think it's never going to matter. But Paul Wolf says you got to give yourself a chance. This strategy gives him the much fresher tires he'll be lining up in the third position man that's gonna make that front row nervous Rick well it's gonna be exciting once again we've talked about the restarts and how how great they are here at Indianapolis the first guy that will see them is after their exiting turn one will be Mike Bagley and Bagman we have seen some great things today yeah we have and I think we're getting ready to see some other things as well some pleasant for some some pleasant for a lot of others however it's hold your breath time at Indianapolis. We've seen this play out before. We've seen these late race restarts and then caution after caution after caution. The laps are precious. The time is over, but the time is now for somebody to make a move. The question is, can anybody get around Denny Hamlin and win this race? Dale? On that last restart, Denny Hamlin got an incredible jump. Best we've seen all day long. What will he do this time? 
Those guys saw that trick. Does he have another trick? Will he try that restart again? And also, these games on the front end of this field on restarts are going to create havoc for everyone in the back of the field. We saw it last year create issues with crashes and so forth. So these last final restarts are going to be very difficult for everyone involved. But what will Denny Hamlin try this time to beat Clint Boyer and Brad Keselowski down into turn one? And Junior, I think that's the key. How do you break, beat Cab, uh, Brad Keselowski? Not necessarily into one, but off of two. He's got much, much fresher tires. So I'm wondering if Denny Hamlin shouldn't pick the outside. Put Keselowski on the bottom behind Boyer. Get that great launch. Beat Boyer into turn one. And now Keselowski's a car. You have a car between you and Keselowski. It's a little bit of a gamble, but how else are you going to beat someone with that much fresher tires? I love everything they're saying about the front two rows, but two guys to keep in mind. Jamie McMurray outside row two, Ryan Newman outside row three. If either of those drivers win, they are playoff bound. They are currently outside. That is the only ticket available to the playoffs. That pushes Alex Bowman out. Even here we are with four laps to go in the regular season. It's still not over. It's still not determined what 16 will go to Las Vegas to race for a championship. McMurray, Newman running fourth and sixth. Could they be the spoilers for Alex Bowman today? Coming back into the restart zone. Three laps of racing to go to determine the Brickyard 400 winner. Back up through the gears they go. Spinning the tires. The 14 of Clint Boyer. That allows the two of Keselowski to stay right on the back bumper of the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Hamlin leads. Keselowski runs second. Fresher tires on the two as he wiggles. And here comes Keselowski rumbling out of the pocket. And he's trying to shut down the distance between himself and Denny Hamlin. Right now, put it at four car lengths on the back straightaway. Clear sailing for Denny Hamlin. I don't know. Brad Keselowski with those new tires is going to have to work hard these, these last few corners. Coming down into turn three, let's see. He dives down in there trying to close the gap just a little bit. But you see it right there. Denny Hamlin holds his own. Keselowski is going to have to carry enough speed in turn three just to stay even. Just trying to beat him off before. You see him gain some ground coming to you, Rick. So much success for Penske in the Indy car, but never in the stock car. Have they won the Brickyard 400? Well, the gap is closed now as they dive into turn number one. Here comes Keselowski right on the back bumper of the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Less than two laps to go. Keselowski is there. The question is, where can he make the move? He is the closest he's been. Hamlin slides up. Keselowski to the bottom of the racetrack, side by side for the lead here at Indy. They touch down the back straightaway, side drafting. Denny Hamlin back to the corner pound the two. What's going to happen down here in turn three? Denny Hamlin with the position, dives down in the corner, but Brad is still there. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Brad Keselowski, they touch again. Watch Eric Jones coming off turn four. These guys are going to get slow side by side. Keselowski with the spot. But can Eric Jones get a run and get by Hamlin on the front straightaway? Brad Keselowski takes the lead. One lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank. Eric Jones up to second. Keslowski, Jones, one and two. Hamlin falls back to third. Holy cow, what a what a great last handful of laps we've had in Indianapolis. It's about to be the captain and Keslowski getting ready to drive into victory lane at the Brickyard. Keslowski is gone off two. Roger Penske has never won the Brickyard 400. Two more corners, and Brad Keselowski is going to bring that gift to the boss man. Here he comes down in turn three. A big lead on Eric Jones, who is a surprise second place finish. And, and not, he, not only a Brickyard 400 win, but think about the two car. They were pretty much unheard of in the regular season. Two wins in a row now coming to the playoffs. Two crown joyals. Last week it was the Southern 500. This week, the Brickyard 400 for Keslowski. Oh yeah, two more keys in a row, are you kidding me? That is unbelievable. Thank you everybody. A late race caution puts the two in position. The fresher tires starting in the second row. Denny Hamlin, again, a great restart, was able to pull out front, but the fresher tires and the domination of the two wins out to get the Brickyard 400.
We mentioned Team Penske not having a Brickyard 400 win. Well, this win for Team Penske overall is win number 499 for that organization. 17 times Roger Penske has won the Indy 500. This is his first Brickyard 400. And the beautiful look of the American flag once again, the trademark of what Brad Keselowski does with every win. He will carry the stars and stripes with him. This moment presented by Sunoco, fueling victories all season long. Check the box. Thank you. <laughs> there you have it. Check the box. Brad K wins in the Monster Energy Cup Series for the second time this year. Last week it was the Southern 500. This week at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. There are men like Roger Penske, like Rick Hendrick, major owners in this sport, that they race because they love to race. They seem to have everything to deliver to them, something they do not have. This for Roger Penske. This racetrack is the, means the most to Roger Penske. He has all the helmets, all the pictures from all 17 Indianapolis 500 victories. He delivered a championship to Roger Penske. Now he's delivered a Brickyard 400. So do you think this helmet goes I hope right Brad doesn't love it because I don't think he's going to have it next week. <laughs> this helmet probably will join those 17 winning on these hallowed grounds. First win at Indianapolis since 1999 for Ford. It has been a long time since the Blue Oval has been able to get to victory lane here. Last week it was the first Southern 500 win since 1975 and now collecting the checkered flag for the Brickyard 400 the very first one for the Penske organization and Marty are you ready for this driver to climb out I am so much history with Team Penske here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. When you walk into the main conference room at Team Penske, there's a very large painting of Roger Penske with all the Borg Warner trophies that he has won from the Indianapolis 500. He will now be able to add a Brickyard 400 trophy to that. So many years of trying for Team Penske, 25 tries. They finally make it to victory lane for the Brickyard 400. Brad Keselowski, Paul Wolf with the strategy call. They're the ones who bring the captain this wonderful win today. What a great win for Brad Keselowski. And a week ago, he had never won a major event in the Cup Series. He has now won back-to-back -back majors with the Southern 500 and the Brickyard 400. It's going to be a popular win as he salutes the fans. High five for all the guys on the team. And the folks at Ford. And Brad, it sounded like there was some emotion in there. I've got to know those final few laps with Denny Hamlin. That was an outright duel. I, it was. You know, uh, I got to give credit where credit's due. My crew chief, Paul Wolf, uh, he made a heck of a call to pit there. We, we pitted kind of late in the stage or late in that run. And the yellow came out. We had new tires. We started eighth. and. It was kind of like he gave me the ball. You know how that goes, Marty. He gave me the ball, and I had to make a play. <laughs> and I'm like, dang, <laughs> this is going to be tough. But, uh, you know, we weren't a dominant car by any means, but Paul and everybody executed a, a incredible race, and I just had to do my job. And uh, here we are in Victor Lane at the Brickyard. God, I wish RP was here. I know he's watching at home, and, oh, what a day. You've now, you've now won back-to-back -back majors, and how about these fans who stuck it out on a Monday to see this? Thank you very much, guys. We appreciate you being here. This is the Brickyard. This is awesome. Man, that's great, Marty. Brad Kozlowski, a winner here at Indianapolis, bringing the captain the trophy. That means the most. One from Indy. Thank you all. Well, we finally got well, it. You hear it. it. We finally got it. That's right, Rick. And why? Because Team Penske is Indianapolis. 17 poles, 17 wins in probably the biggest race in the entire world.
Indy 500. They run on the road course as well. He's won the last four IndyCar Grand Prix road course races. He's won the Xfinity race back in 2012. And up until today, it had been a zero, but no more. You can cross that off right now. Brad Kozlowski, he's delivered one to Roger Penske. The captain now has a Brickyard 400. And the tradition continues. The climbing of the fence. Tony Stewart did it with his wins. And Tony said he immediately regretted that decision, but <laughs> these guys look like they're enjoying every second. Climbing the fence at Indianapolis. The kissing of the bricks will be coming up next. The celebration in victory lane. The great racing between two incredible drivers, Denny Hamlin and Brad Keselowski, a champion. And now another crown jewel added to his racing resume. Last week, the Southern 500, and now giving Roger Penske his very first Brickyard 400. And now the playoff grid is set. The 16 drivers that have an opportunity at the big prize at the end of the season. Now they will work to work their way through the round of 16, the round of 12, the round of eight, and into the championship four with that one chance when they go to Miami to capture the championship. Well, 15 points goes to the regular season champion, and that has now been determined. Kyle Busch, regular season champion, is with Dave. Rick, let's start with today. It was an adventure for Kyle Busch. How would you describe it? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, man, what an ugly day. One of the ugliest ones uh, we've had here at the Brickyard in a long, long time. So um, that wasn't exactly what we were hoping for or what we wanted out of this M&M's Caramel Camry and, uh, and for our team. but. Uh, it's the day we were given. So, um, you know, we had a lot of ups and downs, uh, mostly downs and trying to fight back all the time, but uh, just didn't have quite the speed we were looking for either. You know, wish that we could have been faster than what we were and uh, being able to pass cars easier than what we were able to do. We just didn't have that today. So overall, uh, in grand scheme of things, I guess it's, um, you know, pretty good day considering we get to go home with uh, cool new hardware and, um, you know, also some more bonus points in order to get ready for uh, Las Vegas, my hometown, coming up this week and starting our playoffs. A couple of upsides there. He gets five more bonus points than anybody else for being the regular season champion. And with a presentation from NASCAR, here's Steve Phelps. All right, thanks, Dave. Hey, Kyle, on behalf of NASCAR and our millions of fans worldwide, I want to congratulate you on being our 2018 Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series regular season champion. Right Kyle, what do you think of that? It's awesome. I mean, uh, it's it's certainly special. You know, the, the bonus points mean a lot. The hardware means a lot. Uh, thank NASCAR and Monster Energy and, of course, uh, M&M's, Interstate Battery, Skittles, all of our partners that make it so possible for us to be able to go out here and achieve our goals. And uh, this is just the first step of that, you know. And they give away a trophy for a regular season championship, so we get to take that home, thankfully. But more importantly, we want to go after the end of the season championship and take home that bigger trophy. All right, here, get the handoff from Steve. And the photo ops will begin for Kyle Busch, regular season champion after today's Brickyard 400. Kelly? Back in victory lane now where the celebration can continue for ba Brad Kozlowski and this two crew who always like to do a Miller Lite shower here in victory lane. 
And for Brad Kozlowski, we meet second week in a row. Man, we thought last week's win was a big one with the Southern 500. This one, win 499 for Team Penske, and of course, the first Brickyard. How big is this? Oh, it's incredible. You know, last year, I lost this race almost the exact same way, and to, to bring it home this way, it, uh, I, it feels really good to make up for kind of my mess up last year, and, and to get Roger Penske his first uh, uh, you know, cup car win here at the Brickyard is just uh, an incredible feeling. I'm so happy for everybody at Team Penske. Like I said, 499 is great. We were hoping this would be 500 and the Brickyard, but that's okay. We're, we don't care what number it is. It's the Brickyard. We're, we're so excited. And uh, first win for Discount Tire for us in the Cup Series. That's great. They've been so good to us. And, and this whole team, I, you know, the call made today was just phenomenal. We weren't the fastest car by far, but this team just never gave up on it, made the most of the strategy, and executed a, a perfect race. And uh, that, uh, that's something I'm so proud of. I know you wish Roger Penske was here. You're about to go kiss the brick, so what do you think that's going to be like? Uh, a little grimy, but good. <laughs> grimy never tastes so good. Enjoy. Congratulations. Kelly. Kelly mentioned it. Roger Penske not here to celebrate this first Brickyard 400 win. As we look at the playoff standings entering Las Vegas, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick will enter with the same amount of points. So playoff points will advance from round to round as long as you advance from one round to the next. And how about Brad Kozlowski? Now at the last two wins has jumped up into fourth as far as playoff points. And I think that's a big deal. When I look at this standings right here, I look at Alex Bowman basically all the way through maybe Chase Elliott, even Kurt Busch and Joey Logano. Though those drivers have to be worried in the first round. Remember, four are going to be eliminated. They have very little, if no, head start into the round. You mentioned it, Brad Keselowski, not just momentum, but a little safety net. Always great to get rewarded for your efforts. Another name that's on this list in 13th, Denny Hamlin, 2003 points to start the playoffs. Earlier, Parker Kligger caught up with him. Denny Hamlin finishes third with an aggressive battle against Keselowski there in the closing laps. What do you maybe need to do to hold him off? Not have meaningless guys in the back wreck. I mean, I don't know what they're doing uh, crashing with a couple laps to go, multiple laps down. I, I, meaningless. But besides that, we it, all those cautions allowed the guys who took tires and saved their strategy, allowed them to come back up there, um, and obviously allowed the two to kind of rough us up there at the end. So. Um, very unfortunate, but uh, it's uh, it's what happens sometimes. I've heard you and Wheel say throughout this season you've had speed, but you haven't been able to execute. Today looked like a day you really executed. Is this a great momentum into the playoffs? I don't even care about the playoffs at this moment. Uh, all I care about is you know not winning this race, and uh, it's a one that was a big on my list uh, uh, of races I wanted to win, and the, the team gave me the car that was certainly capable of doing that today and uh, executed flawlessly on pit lane. Uh, the strategy was good, had a fast car, just, you know, circumstances, uh, you know, the cautions. Cautions uh, killed us at the end, allowed those guys to come up there. That's the sting that comes with missing out on one of the crown jewels of NASCAR. And the celebration will continue for the two team. They'll cherish this one. Well, Team Penske, earlier I had mentioned that Will Power won the Daytona 500. He actually won the Indianapolis 500 earlier this year. There you see the captain celebrating that Indianapolis 500 win. Well, Chip Ganassi has done this, winning the two crown jewels at this racetrack in the same year. And now Roger Penske has done it with Will Power and Brad Keselowski claiming the Brickyard 400. And as I mentioned, that celebration is going to go on for quite some time. Such a big win. We obviously had to wait until Monday to see it, but it's oh so sweet to be able to kiss the bricks here at Indy. We had to wait till Monday, and we had to wait till the final restart. That is what we've seen out of this Brickyard 400. You heard it in Danny Hamlin's voice, disappointed. It's absolutely on his list to win. He said the team had the strategy, gave him the car. He feels disappointed. But at the end, I think he looks, you have to look back and say, I had a chance. But Paul Wolf, Brad Kozlowski, they're always the team. You're scratching your head trying to figure why they're doing what they're doing. What they're doing is giving themselves a chance. They didn't have the best car. They continued to fight both in strategy on the restarts. And in the end, Brad Kozlowski, what a move, wins the biggest race 
of his year so far. Oh, yeah. We'll see what that momentum does as we head to Las Vegas. And that's tough to say because he wins the Southern 500 one week and then he comes back with the Brickyard 400 the very next week. What an aggressive move though as we saw incredible racing on the last lap. Denny Hamlin, Brad Keselowski fighting side by side and the guys out there on the racetrack that saw it closest were Mike Bagley, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jeff Burton. It was a fantastic race, Rick. I'll tell you that. A couple of interesting takeaways from this race. Being that Martin Truex Jr. had another bad finish, is he still considered to be a part of the big three or is it now the dynamic duo? And is Keselowski catching fire at just the right time? Playoffs start next weekend in Las Vegas. What does Keselowski, Paul Wolf, and that number two car have as they make their way through the playoffs? We'll be talking about it on the morning drive on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio and NASCAR Live Tuesday nights at 7 on MRN and MRN.com. Yeah, I like what I saw as far as the big three did not dominate this race. In fact, it's it's it seemed that the rest of the field has, ca has caught up at the right time as we head on in the playoffs. What an exciting last few laps. I mean, this was a great race to watch from my vantage point with all the strategy going on and different things happening on the racetrack. But that move by Ke Brad Keselowski and the aggression uh, was just incredible. So a lot of fun for me to watch. And I am excited because the playoffs are next week, man. I mean, this is it's time to really settle this championship. And we start that next week at Las Vegas. I can't wait to be there. Uh, so I'm excited, Jeff. Yeah, and when I think about the playoffs, I got to think about Brad Keselowski. He was not on my list of people I thought could win the championship. But in two weeks, not only did he win the Southern 500 and the Brickyard 400, he gained 10 playoff points that he can use to help move him to Homestead. That is an amazing amount of points to gain in only two weeks for a guy that we really didn't hear that much from. I also think about how well Clint Boyer ran and Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin has struggled this year. We've seen speed from them lately in practice, but it has not transferred to the race. But we did see that today. So Denny Hamlin a good day. I know he's disappointed, but surely he's got to step back tomorrow and say, okay, we had great speed. And then Clint Boyer, he's got his speed back. We saw go away a few weeks ago. Now he's running well also as we head to the playoffs. Yeah, momentum so important as we get ready for the final 10 races of the season. Kelly. Yeah, momentum huge. Let's catch up, catch up with the race winning crew chief, Paul Wolf. 10 extra playoff bonus points you've picked up in the last two uh, races of the regular season. How significant is that? Well, it's big, but what's more exciting is uh, getting this discount tire for in victory lane at uh, Indy. And it's something that hasn't been done at Penske. Um, and, and Rogers had a lot of success here, done a lot of things. But uh, obviously, this one's for him. And Wish he was here. Uh, I didn't think we could top last week, but to come here and uh, win two in a row and at Indy, uh, man, just says a lot about this team. Never give up. We didn't have the fastest car today, but, um, you know, we, we never give up and look at what we can do strategy-wise and um, took our play on that. And, uh, you know, we caught a break with the caution. And, and then from there, uh, Brad had a good restart and was able to execute. Huge strategy call there. Hey, a tradition that continues the kissing of the bricks. A moment I'm guessing you've maybe thought of what's it going to be like out there? Uh, I, I don't know. It's just amazing. Like I said, we, there's so much history here and, and everything that uh, Team Penske's been able to do to, to finally get a cup car in victory lane is huge. All right. Go enjoy. Well, Rick, if this was the last race of the regular season and these drivers put moves like that on on the racetrack, what are we ever going to see in the playoffs? I don't think there's any way to predict the chaos that is getting ready to happen in round one. We're going to take the pressure of the regular season and condense it down into three weeks. In three weeks, four drivers, they no longer have a shot at a championship. Post-race coverage going till 6.30 Eastern tonight, and then followed by Racing Roots and Ryan Blaney. It's time to go to Krista, Kyle, and Nate back in the studio. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.